All right, welcome to session 32. Previously, Raging Ire competed in the Marshall Tournament expert rank and won the championship. For winning, you won 500 silvers and an invitation to the Valonstar celebration of Gadrak on Nip and Day, 5th of Salium. However, unlike the other winners, the entire expedition team was invited to the celebration. Meanwhile, you uncover the poison weapon meant to be used to commit the murder. It appears that House Ratau had hired mercenaries to compete against House Fairmar. One of those didn't seem to know about the plot, but Durag attempted to kill the Farmer Noble. You were trying to track the suspicious spectator, but he vanished into thin air. You were unable to track him. You discovered that the sword and shield symbol is a sigil of the Blackstone Blade, a well-known weapon shop. After investigating the Blackstone Blade, you found out the meeting was canceled, but another will occur on the next Berisha Day at midnight. You learned about Lavinia, the ring Gim Gimbal had given her and had been sent to retrieve it before it was too late. Galen and Iyer, you spoke to Kragar at the Temple of Gadrak and learned about the Blue Sand problem and the possible Noble House involvement. You investigated the full barrow, but could not find anything useful from the outside. You went to Barstead Street, where you confronted one of the dealers, Arlington, and found a note on him. Meanwhile, Oreo, Ragu, and Pico visited Lavinia's herbs and healing to find it occupied by thugs. You infiltrate, infiltrated, finding the room upstairs ransacked, where you found a picture. Ragu distracted the many thugs downstairs and eventually burst in. You learned that the ring had been sold to a pawn shop and then from there learned that Delore had purchased it. As we begin, it is early afternoon on Merica Day the 2nd. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and we'll go ahead and start today with um, uh, Devok and uh, and friends, they um, are currently on Barstead Street. After after yeah. uh, confronting the thug, and they retrieve the note on the thug's person, which hopefully you uh, made a note of. And uh, at uh, after that, he had uh, ran off into the distance. So what do you do? Um. Well, we're down here, right? Yeah, uh -huh. we got all we could. He had said that we needed to go to the uh, to the other place. So if we have time, maybe we should do that. Might go to. Uh, uh, you talking about the other street? Yeah, didn't he say he had like a friend over there that was doing more stuff? Uh, Hold on, let me look at. He had the crumpled up note too. Oh, oh, that guy. Uh, he said something about that. Yeah. So, if you remember, Kragar meant, uh, or sorry, Kragar and the other people <laughs> at the temple mentioned the two streets and mm -hmm. the full barrow. Um, like I said, the full barrow, you didn't find anything from the outside. At Barstead Street, you uh, talked to this person. So, uh, what do you, uh, so what do you do from there? Right, yeah, I'm just trying to remember what we got from him. I'm trying to find the note. Um, I okay. believe... Did I, write it down I don't somewhere. believe I gave you a handout for that. I think I just read it out. Okay. One second. Do you not remember what the note said here? I can paste I'm, it again. I'm looking through, yeah, I'm just looking through the chat. Because you would still have it. Uh, 391, that's right. The, the, something about the... There you go. I pasted the note in the chat. Okay. And then the, we have to knock on one part of the... Oh, wait. The um, did you, you... You got the new passcode, right? Is that the note you got? We got we, you know, yeah, we got... It's right above. It says, Arlington, remember the new passcode starts with 391. Okay. Yeah, I uh, had pasted the wrong note then. Uh, pretend that one I doesn't know. exist. <laughs> I, I, I don't see it. All right, so what do you do? Um... 
Hmm. What do you think, Ayer? Should we immediately try to pop for the other location? The, uh, the like, bar barrel full and try to break in with the passcode? We, I feel like we should scout out the other... Like, like, what if we go to the other dealer on the other street, and then he has Straight a note, him. and it yeah, says, right. like, the password ends with one, two, three, or whatever, and then we have both parts of the password. You know? I like that. Like that. Also, the other note says Kensing Carpentry. Is that another place that we should probably check? Um... Is that, uh, Jeremy, what was... Is that just, like, on the note, like, from... Yeah, it, de it definitely was on the note. Okay. You that's all you know though. Okay. Uh, yeah, I agree. Let's start with the other street, find this other dealer, mess him up a little bit, and then um check out maybe Kensington Carpentry and later tonight we can make a move on Oh yeah, on the, the yeah, yeah. Okay, so you're gonna go to Chat Source Street next? Mm -hmm. Yes. Sure. Alright. You start heading to uh Chat Source Street. It will uh, take you a few minutes to get there. So, in the meantime, the rest of the party was at that uh, at the pawn shop, and you had just discovered that Dolores had purchased the ring. So, what's your next move? I believe we were on our way to the Golden Dice. Wasn't that our tip? Uh, yeah. Uh, Delore now works at the Golden Dice, so we were going to go interrupt before business hours. Okay. I will move you to the Golden Dice. All right. You are you have arrived at the Golden Dice, and you see that it the place is, is closed. Um, you do see people milling about the streets, but don't see anybody um, directly um, directly in front of the door. So what do you do? Do you guys want to go in and, well, not just go in, but I mean, do you guys want to be the face of it? Because otherwise I'll just try and lock, pick it open. Um, do you think we're going to get any response if we try and uh, just bang on the door early? Not like we're customers? Mm-hmm. We could try it. I don't know what the odds are that anything will happen. I'm sure they probably get lots of drunk people wondering, why aren't you open here? Oh, no, I was, I was going to do something like uh, package for Dolor, mailing package for Dolor, you know, something like that. Or no, that's kind of silly. Mm, it's no worse than any other plan. I mean, the only thing I had was trying to sneak in the back, but being obvious trespassers, uh, kind of sign to talk to him would be a bit of a problem. Yeah. Okay. I will go up and I will bang on the door. Okay. After banging on the door, you hear a gruff voice. We're closed at the moment. What do you need? I have a package for Delore. The door op opens up fairly quickly. And you see a, uh, a burly man on the other side. And he says, Delore will be here later. If you want, he's staying at the place right down the st right around the corner. You want me to show you? That would be excellent, good sir. I need him to sign for the package. So a, the burly man kind of comes out and he says, please follow me. And then he kind of leads you out the door. And then eventually he leads you around the corner and then he points at this building. And he says, he's uh, living in there with um, various other workers from the boulevard. Um, you can knock and see if he's home, but uh, he won't be at the Golden Dice until later. Anyway, good much. luck. And then he leaves. So what do you do? Knock on the door. Okay, you knock. And um, a uh, skinny fellow opens the door. Um, you see that he's about six feet tall, but you swear he's only about 140 pounds. He's almost like a skeleton. And then he, he kind of looks up at you, Ragu, and he says, kind of squints his eyes, Yeah? I have a package for Delora. I need him to sign for it. Can he please come to the door? Mm, I can take you to his room. That'll work. All right, come on in. 
He takes you inside, and you see what looks like was once a fairly large house, but from what you can tell, all the individual rooms have uh, seemed to be like little tiny apartments. And you can see various people milling about, and eventually he takes you into a room and uh, knocks. Delore, you got people here. Um, what's your name again? Last Siri. He will remember. All right, Last Siri or something. Um, just if, you, and then whatever, and then he walks away. Uh, and then a few minutes, or about a, 30 seconds later, Delore opens the door. Ah, Delore, how are you doing? He's kind, he kind of squints at you as if he had just woken up. And he says, I'm okay. How are you? Oh, reasonably decent. I'm on another job, and uh, unfortunately, it has also left me back here to you. Through, I'm sure, no fault of your own. But uh, I'm looking for something, and I believe you can be helping me. Okay, uh, maybe. You recently bought a ring at the pawn shop nearby. Uh, he yes. nods. Uh, yeah, I did, actually. It uh, ca caught my eye, so I did purchase it. I'm going to be needing that ring. I will pay you whatever you paid for it and possibly a little extra, but uh, I, I, I really must be taking that. Well, it was I'm, uh... illegally obtained and sold at the uh, pawn shop. Well, I'm um, I'm afraid that uh, I'd love to help Don't you. you but... Dare tell me you gave it to somebody else. <laughs> but my girlfriend, <laughs> Fairly, um, I uh, actually bought it for her, and I gave it to her um, last night. Meanwhile, back at uh, Chatsworth Street. <laughs> And it better not be Janice. All right. So, oh, I'm sorry. Let me put Devok on the map. I seem to have missed him. No All, right, All right. So you have just arrived on uh, Chatsworth Street. You see people walking around. You see a bunch of beggars um, in the corners. And you see what looks like a park area with a statue. So what do you do? Okay. Let's just peek up and down the street this time don't act like fools i don't know what you're talking, talking. I don't know. you were whistling and you're a robot i was acting as though i was a normal person <laughs> these are things normal people do fair enough hey, this guy looks all right <laughs> so go ahead and stop normal. right there um yeah, Ayer, <laughs> are you gonna move up or are you gonna stare at you? <laughs> All right, so what you see is you see, <laughs> sorry, um, you no see a uh, person kind of hiding in a, in a cloak, and he's speaking to, sorry, he's speaking <laughs> to, to a halfling. <laughs> it's funny, uh -huh. because I actually use the same token, but it's supposed to represent a different guy. Anyway, he's speaking to a halfling. And uh, you can see that um, you can see uh, he's holding up a small sack with a blue dot on it, and then the other guy is is, is uh, holding a um, a sack of coins. So what do you do if anything? Okay, hey, let's, let's wait for them to finish the transaction. Then I'm gonna move in, and then we'll take them. Okay, so the mm -hmm. uh, the cloaked figure moves away after the transaction oh. completes. So we... <laughs> I... Oh, he went that way. Okay. Should we stop him? I don't like how he's looking at me through the screen. <laughs> Shall right. I call my trusty steed? No, 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 not yet, not yet. Hold on, I'm gonna I'm gonna move up as cash it. No ire, not yet. <clears throat> and Almost. At, you can... at, at this point, you you start moving closer, and then. Um, the uh, halfling uh, turns around and says, um, my name's uh, Elos. Uh, it's a female halfling. halfling. She says, uh, what can I do for you? This lady's talking to me? Yeah. She's I... the one who seemed to give, uh, he, she's the one who gave the sack with the blue oh. dot to the other guy. Okay. 
Um, got it. All right, I'm just gonna be like, uh, hey, I really need a fix right now. Can I get some uh some blue? And I'll pull out some money. And then I'm gonna actually kind of quietly gesture for Devok and Iyer to to like loop around. Okay. Mm. And then uh, uh, she looks at it and she says, um, you know, I, I heard something interesting. Um, recently, I heard that there was this, uh, this shadow kind, you know, you're not, you're, you know, you're, there aren't very many of you. Anyway, um, a friend of mine said that uh, you had kind of roughed him up. He uh, I, kind of ran. He, you know, he showed up just just like a minute ago, all huffing and out of breath, and saying that someone was going around roughing him up. Uh, well, that wouldn't happen to be you, would it? No, I can't believe I'm getting racially profiled by drug dealers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the injustice! And yeah, my, what's I, going on here? I what's going on is is. I, I Good think, job, boys. I like this movement. I think you're. Uh, <laughs> I think you. Uh, you know, you're. You're looking a little too close to us. I think. I've heard some things. Get Maybe, her, boys. <laughs> Stop. And as you, in the name that, of the law, as you've committed crimes that, against Luma and her people, what say you in your defense? Uh, as you, yeah, uh, sorry, as you do that, I'm going to need all of you to make perception checks. Oh God! She's gonna pull a knife. Yeah, <laughs> she's got a weapon. Um, I'm not very. Oh, I am perceptive. That's what I'm talking about. Oh what? no! They've got friends. Uh oh. It's okay. We'll kill them all and then take their drugs and then go. <laughs> all right. So, um, Galen, you notice uh, a uh, a roped or a cloaked figure oh. uh, come uh, over the roof. At, uh, it's clear that he was hiding there, and yeah. uh, you see him uh, running down the roof as if ready to jump. So I'm yeah. going to need all of you to roll initiative. However, because Galen was able to spot the figures before they can act, you are not surprised. Aha! Uh -huh. Nice. All righty. And I'm going to no, have I'm... the um, Elo... Ellos go last because, uh, uh, as far as you can tell, he is just a normal, everyday human without any dr good connection to the weave, meaning he's not a threat. Oh, oh good. Which one? Ellos, the, uh, the dealer. Got oh, that was a... Oh. Oops. It is round one. So I'm going to go ahead and... Uh, Fire. You uh, you can see the figures slinking over the uh, over the roof, and to the south you can see figures who just crested the roof to the south. So what do you do? Okay. Um. Uh, how high is this is this roof? Um, probably about ten feet. Did you say there was like a rope though that you could. I was leaning down, or no? He's he kind of came up over the 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 peak. He was on the other side of the peak, so he kind of came over the peak, which is where Galen saw him, and he's kind of uh, running down as if he's going to jump. Oh, uh huh. Hmm. But he has not jumped yet. He's currently still on the roof. Yeah, get him. Hmm. I I am going to hold my action. Okay. Uh, I'm going to move. Well, actually, yeah, I'll just hold my... Well... You can move and then hold your action. Okay. I want to move here. And if he jumps into these, one of these, like, within melee range, I want to attack him. Okay. You do so. All right. Devak, you uh, see the figures on the roofs. They're still there. So what are you going to do? Uh, I will shoot side two. Okay, okay. And I'll just flash. And you hit. And then I'll shoot him again, actually. You hit. Nice. Is that the end of your turn? Yeah. All right. 
Then Thug One leaps off the roof, starts running up, and at this point in time, he is going to use his multi-attack to throw two daggers at Galen. Both of which hit. Yeah, that's unfortunate. Galen, you take 11 points of piercing damage uh, to the side. Wow. As two daggers are now protruding from the side of your uh, from the side of your chest. So wh how are you going to respond, Galen? Uh, okay. Now that I have these source uh, warlock things, I'm going to cast a first level spell as a bonus action. Here, I'll put it in chat. And then I'm going to firebolt the guy that just hit me. Okay, so smolder, you focus your flames, using a bunch of your add an extra 1d8 damage, fire damage to the next source of fire damage you deal. Yep. So, so basically what I... this does is it, it charges your spell that you cast as an action. Is that what you meant to do? Yep. Okay. Because it'll make my firebolt really powerful, hopefully. Yep. I'm just trying it out. Um, Who are you shooting ow. at? I'm shooting at Thug 1. Okay, that hits. Right. And you now learn their AC is 15. Perfect. And then let me roll a D8 as well. Wow. So 24 <laughs> points of damage. Two tenths, jeez. <laughs> That's a solid hit. He's still got more than half his health, but not much more. Oh my more. god. Yeah, what uh, the hell? These guys are tough. Yeah. yeah, they are expert level thugs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thug two runs and jumps off the roof. And then he runs forward, throwing two daggers at Devok. Good luck. And nope. the first one hits the bush and gets stuck. The second one just hits the, the, the wall right next to Devok. And then... Thug three jumps down. So Iyer, take your uh, attack. All right, I'm going to hit with my. F do I get to do the extra attack on this? Because it counts as my full attack action. It's a full attack action. So if you if it's a if it's uh, if you can take multiple attacks as part of your same one action, then yeah. All right. Okay, the first one hits. Second misses. All right, and I'm going to. Cast uh, Divine Smite on that hit. Which, if I can figure out how, I've never actually done it before. Uh, so is that like a bonus action, or it's a it's a paladin thing? Whenever you make you uh, land an attack, you can oh, okay. cast Fair Smite. Uh, if I can find it. Hold on. Uh. Oh wait, oh wait, that's the wrong weapon. I'm supposed to be using the iridescent axe, not the flail. I'm too used to using the flail from the... the I'm uh, talking about that divine smite. You... Yeah, but I attacked with the wrong weapon. Is it okay if I... If I is, it, re... is it to hit bonus the same? It is not. What's the difference? Three, plus three. And the damage is also different. Okay, so that 11 would have been a 14, which still missed. Okay, yes, yeah, so that's fine. So just go ahead and roll the damage for your axe. Okay, I'm just going to... There we go. Yeah, 14. Okay, so we'll do minus 10 since I already did minus 4. Okay, great. Okay. And then go and ahead then... and do your uh, your attack. If I, can figure, if I can figure it out. Well, according Let's to this, see. you can spend a spell slot to deal radiant damage. So if you yeah, use the first level spell slot, it's 2d8. Plus a D8 for each spell slot higher than that up to a maximum right. of D8. So you can just do slash R space and 2D8 or, or however oh, many D8s you spend. Oh, yeah, it won't let me actually roll the, or do a... That's fine. Just go ahead. You just do the manual roll. There we go. Okay, so five more damage. Okay, great. All right, so that is the end of round one. So meanwhile, we're going to go back to Delore. <laughs> Oops, wrong, wrong map. All right, so you're speaking with Delore, and he just told you that his he gave the ring to his girlfriend.
thoroughly. Uh, so what do you do? Well, granted, this is something we need to recover. And normally, as far as the law is concerned, there's no obligation to uh, uh, compensate in cases like this. However, uh, we really don't want you to get in trouble with your girlfriend. So we probably should make sure you're able to uh, buy a nice consolation item for her. Okay, well, um, tell you what, she, uh, she'll be coming to the Golden Dice tonight um, to have a drink. And um, i uh, actually not working tonight, so I'll be drinking with her. And um, you can come and, uh, and uh, talk to her and, ex and explain it. And that way, um, well, that way you're the bad guy. <laughs> Uh, how much did you spend on that ring? Um, 30 silver. 30 silver. Okay. Um, here is, um, I'm going to go ahead and hand him um, four gold, five silver. So here's 45 silver. Um, this way uh, you can go ahead and get her something. Um, you know, hopefully that much nicer than original. And that's something I'm not even going to bring up with her there. So, uh, you know, that's just make you look good. Okay. Well, um, in that case, at probably around 7 o'clock tonight, just just meet me at the Golden Dice. I'll, um, I'll be waiting uh, near the front. So I'll see you and then uh, we'll get together. All right. Sounds good. Thank you. Okay. And then uh, back to the alleyway or the uh, park, really. All right. So we are on round two. And it is Iyer's turn. So Iyer, you can, uh, you've just uh, attacked one of the thugs that jumped off the roof. What are you going to do next? All right. Um, I'll swing at a thug three. Okay, go for it. Twice. And they both hit. So for 23 points of damage, as you uh, smash and slice into him, he's clearly hurt, but still hanging in there with about a third of his health. Is that the end of your turn? Uh, yeah. All right. Because I forgot to do it before, the um, uh, Elos uh, t attempts to run away. Does anybody take an opportunity attack against Yes, Elos? sure. Yes. Okay. Don't wait. Don't wait. Don't wait. Don't kill her. Oh, yeah. What'd you say? Don't kill her. Well, I mean, you know, yeah. whatever happens, happens. I can't. <laughs> uh, fair enough. Yeah, go ahead. Fair enough. I agree. Unenforcing the law. Oh, oh no! no. <laughs> oh no! Okay. Oh, oh no! For all damage. He had it her oh, in a park. No. no. Oh. Not the public park. Okay, I, I rolled low. It's good. It's good. Unfortunately, uh, being a normal person, that doesn't quite slice her in half like I thought it was. Um, okay. But uh, it does gouge her chest, and she lands on the ground, bleeding, most likely dead. Oh no! Is she no. fully dead, or is she just making death saves? Um, she's probably gonna die. Uh, at least I rolled low, so I didn't put her, you know, there's that. Yep, there's the that. No, Alright, Devok, you just I saw Ire uh, chop down the uh, halfling <laughs> as uh, she tried to run away, and you have the thug in front of you. What are you gonna do? I might have a solution. Okay. Oh, no, no, don't, 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 res don't. No, <laughs> wait till the fight's over. Don't, Not in the don't. park. <laughs> we can't be making zombies in the park. No, that's what I mean. I mean, oh. I, I can stabilize her. Oh, oh yeah, 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 that's good. Should I do that? Uh -huh. wait, uh, not, if it'll, not if it'll take your entire turn. No, do it, do it, do it. You think so? Yeah, I think you should. Hey, go for it. I'm sparing the dime. Okay. Yeah. You do have to touch her, so are you going to run over and touch yeah. her? Yes, I will. Hold on. Okay. 
Well, in that case, as you're passing by, you get yeah. an opportunity to attack, which misses. Yes. All right, you stabilize her, and she's unconscious but alive. Is that the end of your nice. turn? Yes. Yes. Okay. All right. Thug so one perfect. runs up to Galen. And no. as he's running up, he's pulling out a scimitar. And you see a scimitar ah. in one hand and a dagger in the other. And <laughs> at this point in time, he takes his two attacks at the scimitar yes. and his one attack with the dagger. Oh, oh my god. It oh, looks wow. like all of that misses except for one of the scimitars, oh, thank god. which does five points of damage. Okay, I'm going to take this time because I need... To, I'm going to immediately cast as a reaction Hellish Rebuke. Okay, what does that do? He's hurting me. First, let me take my damage. Sorry. I okay. completely forgot about that. Um, uh, that is, as a reaction, here, I'll just put it in that thing. It's another. I'll cast it at first level as well. All right. Uh, so... He has to make a dexterity save of DC 15 or he takes six fire damage. That was a bad roll. That's very unfortunate. Yeah, that's true. But if it does damage, that's better than nothing. That's also true. Unfortunately, he makes it. No! Okay. All right, Galen, it's now your turn. So what do you do? Uh, uh, one second. I actually... Not entirely sure. Here's within melee range, which means that any uh, um, ranged attacks will be a disadvantage. Um, it also means that if you move away, he gets to make an opportunity attack. Mm -hmm. However, you do have melee spells, so I think I you'd be do. okay. Yeah, I think I think I'll be all right. Oh, I'll use Shocking Grasp on him. Okay. If he's wearing metal or anything, I get advantage on the attack. Is he... Uh, let me see. He is not wearing metal. Um, right. He is using metal weapons, though, but he's not... Hold but the handles aren't metal. So, yeah, I don't uh, think you it, get any advantage yeah. then. Okay, that's fine. It was worth a shot. Um, that's not going to hit. It does not work, unfortunately. He... Uh, he steps out of the way as you attempt to shock him. Is that the end of your turn? Um, I th think it has to be, unless I might have to retreat behind you, Iyer. That's fine. Do what you need. Uh, I don't know. I might. I'd take an opportunity attack. I think. Yep. Eh, uh, I think it's worth it. I'm going to take the opportunity attack. One, two, three. Okay, so he hits you with the scimitar as you move away. Yeah. And you take eight points of damage. Ow. Okay. All right. Thug two then runs up to Ire and attempts to use his multi attack with two scimitars and a dagger. And unfortunately for him, against ire the scimitar is the only thing to hit so ire you take eight points of damage okay and then expert thug three is also attempting to uh hit you you did the uh math the wrong direction oh i know i subtracted my max health instead of mine and one of the scimitars hits and the dagger hits so you take a total of 14 damage. And that is the end of the round. Meanwhile, at the Golden Dice. All right, you've just met up with Delore, and he, um, he told you to meet with him tonight. So what do you do next? And if you say fast forward time, that's fine. And then we can just go, we, uh, we can wait until it's nighttime. Uh, how far away are we from 7 o'clock? It's probably maybe 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, was there anything else that we wanted to do? Did you want to go back to researching for a couple hours? 
I know I did pull you away from that. And, yeah, uh, I think I might duck back out for that if we uh, don't have anything else going on. Uh, you could always uh, swing by Gimbal's and uh, see if uh, you can get more information uh, out of him. Oh, yes, we do want to find out because we believe there is foul play in this. Uh, Oreo, did you want to come with me or did you have something else you were planning on doing? No, you can go. I'm just going to go back to the apartment. It's all good. Okay, so Oreo is going to the apartment, Pico is going back to the library, and Ragu, you're heading to Gimbal Shop, right? And we're all going to meet back at the Golden Dice at like 6.30, get here early. Yeah, my exact suggestion. Okay, so it'll take you some time to get there, so we will go back to the fight on Chatsor Street. All right, so it is now round three, and Ayer... You have uh, two thugs near uh, nearby who are both attacking you. Galen has just run behind you. What are you gonna do? Um, I'll uh, just keep going on for thug three, try and finish him off. Okay. Oh. The first one he dodges at the first one, but you hit with the second. So he takes another ten points of damage. And he is really feeling the pain for you, from you today. Is that the end of your turn? Um, I'm going to smite him again. Okay. That takes a first level spell slot, correct? Yep. So you smite him, and he is he's somehow still standing, but just barely. He's bleeding. He is cl- uh, near collapse. Is that the end of your turn? Uh, yes. All right, Devok. The um, Elos is stable. The expert Thug 3 is nearly collapsed. And Expert Thug 2 and 1 are uh, slightly damaged. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? I'll shoot Thug 1 with this one. This one Actually, over here? One. Okay. Sorry, thug 3. Oh, Thug 3. Okay. That hits. And <laughs> you do not take him out because he had three hit points. Oh, Oh yeah, he has okay. one hit point now. One more? Does that hit? That hits, and you take him out. Jesus! And there goes my entire turn. Yeah. <laughs> Alrighty, Thug One then takes advantage of the situation to run around Ire in order to flank. So oh, he now has advantage, and he back. is going to take all his attacks. I'm so sorry. <laughs> it's okay. So the 16 misses, the 21 and 22 hit. So Ayer, you take another 12 points of damage from the flurry of attacks. Galen, you can uh, see that the thug took advantage of the situation and uh, hurt Ayer. What are you going to do? Yeah, he's being mean. Um... Dang. Let's, uh, that's just too shocking grasp. I don't want to blow all of my spell slots on this fight. So before you, uh, attack, if you move here, you'll be flanking them and you'll have advantage. Yes. That is what I'll do. We'll form the chain. Uh, <laughs> all right. Yay. And you hit. That was bad. For three points of damage. However, he does not have his reaction if you want to move and now away. Now I, I can move away, yes. Uh, yeah, let's just break to over here. Is this dude still here? Is no, he's gone. gone. Uh, let me go okay. ahead and hide him. All right, is that the end of your turn? Um, yeah. Fair enough. All right, Expert Thug 2 takes advantage of the flank in order to try to take out Ire. Can he do it? No, he cannot. No. He cannot hit. All right, and now uh, we, will, we will start round four, but first. All right, Ragu, you arrive at Gimple's shop. What do you do? Hello, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, sorry. I arrive at Gimbal shop. I go in. Uh, hello, my friend. How are you holding up? 
I'm all right. Any luck with the ring? Ah, uh, yes. It is a very interesting thing, and I will give you the details of it later when it is fully resolved later tonight. Um... I did have a question for you, though, regarding your friend Lovinia. Okay. And I apologize if this is if this is difficult, but uh, can you please be telling me how exactly and specifically she has uh, passed away? All right. He uh, sighs and he says, "I'll I'll tell you what I know, but uh, my information is uh. incomplete." A apparently a nearby friend. He goes uh, by the name Tapkin. He's owner of Tapkin's Clothing, which is um, in the same district, I believe. Anyway, he found her in the back room of her shop. Apparently, he was passing by and found the door was wide open, even though the shop should be closed at night. At the time. She was still alive, but gravely injured. But she had enough consciousness to tell him that she had been coming back from purchasing some bottles from a nearby glass blower, and she apparently noticed some uh, two large humans, or at least they looked like humans, following her from a distance, and so she ducked into a nearby alley. And while in the alley, apparently she was mugged and gravely injured in the process. Uh, they stole her money and left her for dead. Though somehow, not dead yet, she managed to make it back to her shop. And of course, after being told all this, Tapkin called for the guards and a healer, but um, I'm told that it was already too late, and she passed shortly afterward. The guards investigated briefly, but failed to turn up anything. Though, in my opinion, based on how quickly they gave up, I'm guessing someone bribed them to avoid trouble with the law. I have no evidence of that, of course. Uh. I have tried to get the guards involved myself, but the case is closed. I wanted to get the ring back from Joaquin Seal, the group that loaned her the money before it was too late. Okay. Well? And that's unfortunately all I know. Um, it, maybe Tapkin knows more, um, or it, it, maybe there's something he forgot to tell me, but you can find Tapkin's clothing in the um, nearby. It's just, um, you know, just the next street over. Okay, thank you. Um, has she been interred yet? She has. Her body is not there, and the um, the city came and got her. And um, um I, I I understand. Um, was she uh, buried or uh, cremated? My understanding is she was probably buried. Thank you. I shall be back later tonight to give you more details on what I have found, but you need not worry about the guards doing anything. You are much better than the guards now. You have me on the case. Okay? You kind of clap him on the shoulder to try and help him feel a little better. He nods his head and he says, uh, All right, then. I will speak to you later. Good luck. Oh, of course, and thank you. And I hope you are feeling better. Thank you. And then, meanwhile, Oreo uh, goes back to the apartment, and, you know, you uh, don't have any trouble getting there. And um, Pico, you come back, and the books are still waiting for you to continue with what you were doing. Meanwhile, back on Chatsworth Street. It is now round four, and Iyer, it is your turn. What are you going to do? Uh oh, Galen moved away. I don't get. Uh, yeah. uh well. Uh, pfft. is it worth it for me to? Yeah, I think I move. Like so. And take the opportunity attack from two. Okay, fair enough. 
Let me go ahead and do that now. Um, he did not have advantage. Oh, actually, he did have advantage because you're flanked, so that hits. Uh, is that would I still be flanked if I'm moving? Um, yeah, that's a good question. Um, we'll go ahead and avoid that. We'll say he missed for now, and then I'll look it up later. Okay. Uh, and then I'll take two hits on Thug. One. All right. And they both hit. All right, so All right, 23 so points of damage. Nice, solid hit. Is that the end of your turn? Uh, yeah, I'll stay here. Block block the other guy from Galen. Fair enough. All right, Devox, so what are you going to do next? I move, then I shoot the same thug he just hit. All right. And you hit. For nine Sorry, points nine. of damage. Is he alive? Yes. He is still alive. And the second one misses. Uh, okay, that's my turn. All right, and he is about one-tenth of his original health. All right, Thug 1 is going to attempt to attack Ire. He no longer has advantage. And due to that, he misses everything as uh, Ire uh, it's just, it just glances off his armor. Galen, what are you going to do? Um, hmm. We just need to kill this guy, so I'm gonna I'm gonna shoot him with a fire bolt as well. All right. You hit. That shouldn't have advantage. I'm sorry. And you managed to take him out. Is that the end of your turn? I'm gonna actually move up to here, so I can see this guy. Okay. All right. You move up. And Expert Thug 2 sees his two fellows have just fallen. And at this point in time, he is going to run. And dashed. Hmm. And we start at round 5. We'll go ahead and just finish this off. So, Ire, you can see him running away. Are you going to let him go, or are you going to chase after? Let's see. Uh, uh, you know what? Tempest! Tempest to me! Call my <laughs> trusty steed into battle. Uh, Is that an action? Yeah. Uh... Yes, I don't know. Okay, um, so if that's an action, then uh, he shows up, you jump on him, you can still move, but you can't attack. Alright, now I have to look oh, up the... Yeah, it's speed. fine. With, if you have a horse, you can catch up. Yeah. Oh, that's fine. <laughs> okay. You're there. there. Ram him. Run him over. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna trample him. Alrighty. Devok, you can see that Iyer's running off on his horse toward the uh, expert thug, so what are you gonna do? Um, I'll go ahead and just support him with some Elders Blasts. Okay, go for it. And they both hit. Cool. For a total of 17 that... points of damage. Nice hit. Yeah. Is that the end of your turn? Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. All right, Galen, you saw Iyer summon a steed and ride off. What are you going to do? Hmm. Yeah, I'm also going to help out. I'll just shoot him. Are you within range? Uh, let me check. Uh, you... 120 feet, so I assume so. 120? Okay, yeah, that's fine. Go ahead. Pew. Critical hit. Nice. Nice. For oh 29 God. points of damage. I'm a fire mage. And he is nearly dead. And uh, I'll yell, he's bleeding. I'll yell, yeah, I'll yell surrender or die. And then at this point in time, he uh, kneels, he puts his head down, and he says, I surrender. I, I, um, I strike him down. No, yeah, it is like, your turn, <laughs> Iron. Is, is that what you're doing? No, 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 no. I'm going to grab him, though. Okay, so you grab him, so we'll take you out of combat. 
All right. You now have them in your hands, so what are you going to do? Um, pull them into the alleyway where they did the sketchy shit so we can so Yeah, we can I'll, talk I'll to pull them. them over here. And They're also drag this, this yeah, person. Devok uh, and I can yeah. pick her up and yeah. carry her over. We don't want to do this in the middle of a park. <laughs> I mean, they're selling drugs in the park anyway. It's probably not the best neighborhood. That's true. All right. All right. So while we wait for the lady to wake up, let's, um, let's, uh, let's interrogate. Uh, question this thug. guy? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, Jeremy. <laughs> interesting question. Is expert thug still considered hostile to us or could I cast friends on him and interrogate him using that well he's still ho he's not actively attacking but he's definitely still hostile, hostile. towards you he's okay. just trying to avoid dying so i can't yeah okay, i so can zone a truth him if you want is it is it a spell slot i'm not sure if it's worth it if we it is a just, spell slot let's just start let's start by searching he's near death for, yeah he's yeah. near death we can probably just uh what's the word intimidate him. yeah we can i'm like gonna yeah up. let's search him let's let's yeah, we're gonna let's search, search both these guys their notes okay. and stuff. You search him and you find that he is wearing studded leather armor. He has one scimitar and um, two daggers. Um, he had four daggers, but two of them were thrown earlier. Uh, so they're just like on the ground. Um, no, they're in me. All of, <laughs> all, okay, yeah, fair enough. So they're in you. Uh, <laughs> so th all of that's just regular stuff. If you just look it up using the eye, you can see what that stuff is. Um, he also has one bag of the, uh, blue sand kind of attached to his belt. And in addition to that, he has 20 silver, a sack with 20 silver. 20 silver? And wow. 30 coppers. Wow. Oh, I also want to search the, the other two thugs be killed. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Oh, you mean you're going to search Elos over here? I'm no, well, yes, but also the the two thugs. That we oh, killed. right, right. Um, in that case, uh, let me roll for their money. So um, <laughs> one had 18 silver. The other had 33 silver. And money, money, money. Yeah, tell me when you're ready. What? Oh, no, no, you get it. I'm assuming somebody's writing this down or adding it to an inventory or something, right? I don't want any of it. It's all for you. Yeah, I also don't want the money. Devon, this is, dr this is drug money. I'm I'm a I'm a um, pure Christian maybe boy. Can, maybe we can keep it separate and like use all of the money we take from this organization to like help the church fight. True, actually, yeah, we should that. do that. Do that. Oh, here, let me so just do this. So what I want to do is twenty plus eighteen plus eleven silvers, and then thirty. Plus 33 plus 27 coppers. And then you guys can decide what to do with that on your own. Um, you also have three scimitars. Um, I don't think we what would that, that be? 12 daggers. Um, um, three, three studded leather. Now, you may not take this, you may just leave it on their bodies or whatever. I'm just uh, putting it out there and yeah. then you guys can tell me what if you strip them or what have you um, sure. and then one of them had a uh, bag of um, blue sand okay who, taking who, that. who was holding on to the drugs by the way from the last one the last one the, the one that that uh, surrendered no I meant I meant of us sorry Gay, uh, Devok mm -hmm. and uh, Iyer, who, remember the last dealer, he had a bunch of... Yeah, I didn't write it down, but... but uh, let me check if I did. We did, we did grab it, and one of us should have it. Mm -hmm. So we're just, like, stocked with drugs now? Well, mm -hmm. we're gonna turn them into the police, but for now, yes, Not we are stocked. <laughs> Alright. You can't you even, can't even write it down. A robot can dream, all right? <laughs> <laughs> all right, so, so currently the um, the Elos is just waking up. Um, she uh, is groggy, you know, almost died, um, and she's still got grievous wounds, 
but they're no longer actively killing her. I already had searched her, by the way. Can I see what Okay, you search her. her, and you find on her a, a note. Let me paste the note. And on the back of the note, it says Kenzin Carpentry. And then previously, you had the other one where the uh, passcode yeah, begins ends with... Yeah, 391 Yeah. Okay, cool. So we have that now. Meet me at 11 in the back. Okay, cool. And then, so... Guys, do you do you want to have said that I held on to all the drugs, or do one of you want to hold? Yeah, on? that's that's fine. It's all you. Okay, We're, Jeremy, uh, I don't remember how many we had from last time, but yeah, um, I forget important. what I had said, and I didn't actually write it down, so we'll just say six bags. Okay. Blue. Do we know the street price of uh, much? We're not selling drugs. <laughs> <laughs> you fucking animal. <laughs> We're gonna turn these in. All right. Um, so yeah, I search Elos and we found that note. Did she have any other things? I want to confiscate her drugs. Oh, well. uh, she's probably got six sacks as well. Okay, so I'll go ahead and put down that we have thirteen, counting the bag we got off the pirate hand or the the thug. Okay. So currently the um, thug is still alive. He's still kind of mm -hmm. crouched down. And Ellis is awake, but not moving much because of her injuries. And so what do you guys do? All right. So I'm going to start talking to them first. Ayer, we're going to kind of good cop, bad cop this, okay? All right. Well, who's the good cop? I, I'm the good cop. I'm going to be nice, right. and you're going to be like murder, murder, murder. Mm -hmm, right? mm -hmm. murder. I am a murder robot. So okay. I'm so good. I'm going to say to both of them. A murder robo, you say? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm going to say to both of them, look, we need to know information, and I don't want to hurt or kill either one of you. However, we did let the last guy go, and that ended up hurting us in the long run. So if I don't get my information, I don't get what I want or hear that you guys won't ever say anything about this to anyone, I'm going to have to let my friend Iyer do what he wants to do, and that's kill you both on the spot so we're gonna have to have some cooperation because i don't want to hurt you if we just work with me everything's gonna be fine so that sounds like it's probably intimidation however eh. ire you are um you're looking probably looking all big and robotic so mm -hmm. you have a big and <laughs> i am pretty big and robotic so, so you say that's intimidation yeah and you have advantage because of okay. ire I don't have a terrible intimidation. I'm just not very intimidating myself. Okay. All right. So what she's is, cowering, is... and the thug's like, whatever. Uh, I, I understand. Thank you for sparing okay. my life. Yep. Hey, man, I just want to help people here. All right. So first of all, we have half of the passcode to Kensing Carpentry, and the end is 391. Tell me what the beginning is. Um, the thug shakes his head. I don't know. And then Elo okay. says, um, I, I, I honestly um, don't know it, but I, I can tell you where to get it. Okay, let's start there. Um, I know it's going to be documented um, somewhere inside of the full barrel. Okay, cool. So now let's break it down. Full barrel, what are we looking like in there in terms of... Uh, how it's locked down and where the important information is and then we'll move on to Kensington or Kensington Carpentry Okay, well, um, I know that um, The um, the full barrow it's a it's a shop it, it has um, you know, I think they sell furniture um, We just meet there and, and get our assignments. I, uh, they don't tell us much um, there are a couple of um, of thugs that work there as well i think um just to kind of keep order and um i believe the information you're looking for it is uh, there's an office in the back um and then if if you, from the office there's some stairs upstairs and i think uh -huh. there's probably some more information because one of the um important people has a big room up there and, and i think they have stuff there 
Okay, great. Thank you. Um, guys, do we want to know anything else? Do you know anything about the people who supply your your blue sand or probably I, not too much? I, I, I don't know. We, we just meet at the full barrel. We get the uh, we get what we're supposed to sell and we get paid. Um, and um, that's what we do. OK. I better, better not, not hear or see from either of you two again. Actually, one last thing. You're the halfling that uh, spilled the beans and came up. Do you know where he lives? Oh, um, no, we don't. We only know each other from from this. Um, he, right. he shows up mm. at the place sometimes, but mm -hmm. uh, I don't know him personally. All right, that's fine. We'll find him. All right. Uh, you sure you want to let these guys go? The, After what they've done well, to us? Well, yeah. it's fine. We're going to... Well, if we hear anything that traces back to them, we'll find them like we're going to go find that halfling. It'll be fine. All right. I better not hear from either of you two, and uh, you probably should stay away from that halfling's house. I think I, I let him go. You guys don't have any other questions, do you? Nope. All right. Okay. So, yeah, um, as soon as go. you let him go, they go and run away as fast as they can. Yep. Okay, so new battle plan. We're gonna take. Uh, we're gonna probably do the the barrel thing, right? The barrel. Uh, the the first place where we could get the rest of the code and then go to Kensington later at night. Yes. Kensington later at night. Full barrel. Thank you. Isn't Kensington the name of a place in real life too? Kensing Carpentry. Uh, Kensington. Let me check. Kensington. It sounds yeah. like a place. Sound like a place in Philadelphia. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> sounds like a place. Like a laptop uh... lock. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, um, meta-wise, some uh, names are actual real names or derived from real names. So you may find strange coincidences, but they're just that. Yeah. Oh sure. yeah, like that obvious Bonnie and Clyde reference. Anyway. <laughs> Uh, so what are you guys going to do next? Um, I think since what time is it? It is pr by now are still probably around 2.30. Okay, so let's. Uh, I don't want to. We don't go to Kensing, not Kensington. We don't go to Kensing until 11. And we might actually want to see if we can take the entire crew because these guys were kind of tough. But I think before we go to full Barrow, let's kind of lick our wounds a little bit. And then head to Full Barrow, see if we can knock it over, and uh, yeah, go from there. Does that sound good to you guys? Yeah. Okay. So, what okay. do you mean by licking your wounds? Are you going somewhere? I, I'm gonna use my healer's kit on myself. Ire, how do we? Do you need me to cast a cure wounds on you? What do we? What are we looking like here? If you can, yes. Yeah, it totally. would be much preferred. Sure. Uh, or if we can just rest for a bit, I need to. I can Maybe we can dice. take. Well, a short rest is a full night's sleep. Oh, yeah. You can take. Um, um, you, you you can take ten minutes per um, per hit dice if you want to take uh, just a breather. Yeah, we can do that and do a cure wounds, and I'll roll a couple hit dice. Okay, sure. Let me roll for my um. Let me do my healer's kit first. I think that's just a d6. Okay. I don't get the oh for you. Plus something, yeah. Sorry, I always forget what the roll is. Uh one D six plus four plus additional hit points equal to my maximum hit dice. So yes, six, maximum hit dice plus all that. Six, so twelve. That's not bad. I might actually be alright. 29. Uh, yeah, I'll use one hit die if that's okay with you guys to take a quick quick rest. Maybe one or two. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, yeah. And yeah, it's 10 minutes actually... per hit die, so however, and you guys do it in parallel, so you guys decide who's taking the most yeah. hit die. Uh, I can. Do you want me to heal before or after hit dice, uh, Ire? Uh, before. Okay. Um, how many are you down? 
meta wise? 34. Jesus Christ. Okay, um. <laughs> I guess I'm going to cast it as a second level spell. Okay. Or maybe. Maybe third? I don't know if we want to get that ballsy. Mm, one is two is fine. I can just use my dice. Okay. So sixteen. So I'm at fifty, and then I use a hit die. I think yeah. I'll also use a hit die really quickly. Okay. I am back to four. Wait, fifty nine. Yeah. So you used two hit die, so you yes. guys spent 20 minutes resting them. Really, is that? No. I used two. Well, you're spending 20 minutes, so if you want to spend an extra hit die, you can. Wow, that's so sad. Okay. Uh, <laughs> you, know, you know what I'm going to no. do? You know what I'm going to do? Uh, the, um, the gods smile upon you, and they allow you to roll the second one once more. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Watch him roll a one again. Well, if he does, he has to take it, but... <laughs> hey! Yeah, okay, so three and five, so that's an extra two. Actually, speaking of which, I think I get an extra one point anyways, because of... No, that's for when I actually am actively healing. Never yeah. Mind. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah, good enough. Um. Okay, all right, I guess so we you start heading to. Yeah, yeah we film this nice park, and then I think we're gonna head over to Full Barrow. Okay. I. Or should we turn in our drugs for? Eh, we'll do it afterwards. Okay, you start heading to the Full Barrow. Meanwhile, Ragu, you just left Gimbal's shop. What are you gonna do? Okay, I just left Gimbal shop with that information. Is it? Uh... It's about two thirty. Now, you if you just say I, I just want to fast forward time, that's perfectly okay too. Okay, actually, I I think I will go uh, talk to Tatkin. You said he was right around the corner. Yep. Okay, so you head to the marketplace district, which is up here. And um, you pass by uh, Lavinia's shop as um, you had as you head to uh, Tapkin shop. So let me uh, open that up. And you arrive at Tapkin's clothing. You can see that it is a modest clothing store. Um, and looking inside, you can see various clothes set up. And um, you see a... Um, a um, modesty height, you know, modest size human inside. He's probably about um, five eight. Uh, he's fairly skinny and looks middle aged with graying hair. So what do you do, uh, Mr. Tatkin? I presume. He uh, looks up. Oh, welcome to the store, young man. You are quite large, are you, aren't you? Well, no matter. I um, I also do tailoring, so I can measure you and have you fit, even though nothing in the, that's out on the floor will fit you, obviously. So, what kind of garments are you interested in today? Well, I do have a very uh, fancy banquet to be going to, and I'm going to be needing some fancy clothes for the fancy banquet. Oh, excellent. All right, um, he c comes around the desk, and you can see he's got some, some uh, rope in his hand with markings on it. And he says, all right, then, what sort of uh, attire are you looking for? Are you looking for, like, a, um, a cloak and, um, uh, you know, a fancy suit? Or are you looking for something, something else? And what kind of colors are you looking for? Uh... Well, I have been invited to the uh, Valenstar banquet. I'm oh, sure wow. you are aware of this. That is, uh, that's impressive. Um, how did that, how'd you do that? I, I'm a big man, like you said. I, I fought in the tournament and won. 
but uh, I'm sure you can think of something appropriate for that level of uh, that level of uh, sophistication. Oh, of course. So he uh, shows you a, a a setup that's obviously way too small for you, um, but he shows you it's got a um, a uh, kind of like gray gray cloak, and um, uh, beneath it is this. Uh, uh, fancy black button-up shirt with um, brass buttons and then uh, uh, black but very smooth and fancy pants and beneath it there are some uh, some shiny black shoes and uh, you can see that there is some sort of uh, uh, wrist collar um, that uh, um, seems to go underneath the shirt to kind of keep it uh, to keep it nice and straight uh, and he says, yes, um, we can, uh, th you know, here's uh, one of our latest fashions. And um, the entire ensemble can be uh, yours for a mere 35 silver. Uh, just out of, out of context, Jeremy, does that look appropriate enough to wear to this fancy schmancy ball? Yeah, it looks pretty Banquet. good quality. Okay, then... Yes, I think this will be doing nicely, and I pay the man the 40 silver, and now I'm going to have to get fitted. Okay, yeah, so he takes the time, and it's like, he's, he basically positions you in various awkward positions in order to get all his measurements, his seams, and everything else. And that, after... That's actually what I wanted. Okay. Um, I'm going to be standing there, you know, holding my arms out and stuff so he can be measuring me, but he's being paid by me. I now have a uh, captive audience. I'm going to start asking questions about Lavinia. Fair enough. Go ahead. So, uh, you uh, know uh, Lavinia as the uh, apothecaryist? Um, I knew her, yes. Yes, uh, so did I, and my good friend Gimbal also was knowing her. And uh, I just wanted to find out what happened. I uh mean... Um, you, you know, I've been told that you are the person who found her last. Yeah, um, you know, um, yeah, I, um, I already told the guards everything I know. I'm sure you did. I'm sure you did. Uh, that's for my own personal edification. The woman was very dear to my heart. She was almost like a grandmother to me. It oh, would make uh, me feel so much better knowing. Um, well, that's 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 great i'm i'm sorry for the loss of she was a friend of mine too but um i'm afraid i don't have anything else to say on the matter nothing at all um, can i keep working on him i mean he's gonna have a while taking my measurements yeah so what you can do is uh you can make a persuasion check okay Yeah, he's uh, he, he he's kind of like looking down. It's like, uh, I'm sorry. There's nothing else I can say. Uh, why not? Are you being intimidated? Is somebody has threatened you? Um, Perhaps. I, I told you everything I can. And then he, he I... kind of rushes through their their the rest of the measuring. You can tell he's trying to hurry up and get it done. Go ahead. And I I, I kind of put my hand on his shoulder and it's like, look. I, I am not a fancy man like like you, and the, this banquet I'm going to is not really my uh, my uh, cup of beer, but uh, I can tell when a man is scared, and you should not be scared at the passing of a sweet old lady. You should be sad. Tell me, what has frightened you? Because whatever it is. I guarantee you, it is frightened of me. So what I'm going to have you do is I'm going to actually have you make an intimidate check, but you're not rather, you're, it's not so much to intimidate him, but more yeah. like you're intimidating his enemies. And yeah, because you're that. a big man, and uh, uh, I'm going to go ahead and let you use strength for this. Oh, so thank you very much. That does work. Okay, so uh, he, he, you can see he's kind of got tears in his eyes, and he says, all right, I understand. Um, and let me finish this, and then I'll, I'll take you to the back. 
And then yep. so he finishes his measuring. Uh, he, you see him writing down numbers. And then um, he says, I'm assuming you actually do want this, right? Uh, yeah, actually, I do need something for the for the for the banquet, and it just seemed like a perfect reason to get his captive attention in order to question him. Should he, you know, try and run off like this? Because Fair enough. If All right, I was so just he... standing in the shop, he would have shoved me out the door. Right. So he finishes, and then he says, "Please come, come into the back for me," and then he leads right. you into the back of the shop. Okay. And then, uh, yeah, he has you sit at a table, and he says. All right, I will tell you the truth. The truth of the matter is, is I was threatened by um, some people who work at Joaquin Services. Um, and I, there's not much I could say to, to the guards or anybody else for fear of my shop and my life. Um, I told Gimbal because, well, that was before I was threatened, honestly. Um, and he is a dear friend. Do not worry. No one besides you and me will know of your part in this if it makes you feel better. But uh, to uh, not allow these men to get away with such a travesty is my utmost concern. So what I did tell Gimbal is, is true. Um, I did find her barely alive in her shop. And I do know that she was attacked in a alleyway. I, I got a description of it from her and I'm, I'm familiar with the area so I can actually tell you where that is if you want to look at it yourself. Yes. But what's most important probably is that this, um, this group seems to be well connected because the guards did it just a token investigation and I don't know who they're connected with but I can also tell you where their their building is it's actually in this district it, there's an old building um, I thought it was abandoned but then they showed up one day and um, so that's where they are um, and one other thing I can tell you is that um, there, when they were talking, they uh, said, that "They said, tell Renfro, I mean the boss, that the job is done." Renfro. Uh, go ahead and put it. In. Okay, Renfro. Anyway, uh, that and with what I already told Gimbal is honestly all I know. But let me let me go ahead and point out the building and the alleyway when when you're ready. So you then you can decide what to do next. Unfortunately, I can't get involved. Of course, I understand, and I want to thank you for uh, the information you have given me. It will be very helpful. You're you're and welcome. Don't worry. Uh, no one shall know of your involvement if it makes you feel better. Of course, thank you. So at this point in time, he takes your, he puts your measurements away and he says, uh, come back tomorrow for your suit. Um, sometime uh, in the afternoon would be fine. Um, I will be ready for you. In the meantime, please come with me. I will, I will point out the locations to you. I won't get too close, but at least you'll know where they are. Of course. So he takes you outside and he walks you down part part way down one street and then another, pointing out both the alleyway and the uh, place that says, um, sorry, the place that says Joaquin Services out front. And you can see that it is a, a rundown looking shop building, um, but by looking through the windows, you can see that all the shelves that normally would have items to sell are all empty. Okay, so um, while he's doing that, meanwhile, Pico, you're still studying. Oreo, you're at the apartment. Is that all you're doing or are you doing something else? No, not really, just you can carry on, all good. Okay, so in that case, we will head back to the full barrel. 
where the other half of the party is. So you guys have arrived at the full barrel. What are you going to do next? Okay. Um... Hmm. Which entrance do you guys want to take? Because we need to get the rest of the code from in here. Mm hmm. Well, uh, wait, where is the code for again? It's for the the Ken. I'm going to say Kensington. Ken Kensing Carpentry. Okay. And we mm -hmm. have the last half, which is 391. And the, the drug dealer said the first half is in Full Barrow. And then she well, described the full barrow, uh, like what what the layout was. But I'm now mixing it up with Kensing. Was there uh wasn't was this the one with an office on the second floor? So is there, that... yeah. this, is this the one that had, yeah. There's a, a back room on the first floor, yeah. And then a uh, the important room, uh, or the room of an important person that also has an office in it on the second floor. Okay. Well, I can guarantee you that there's people here right now. Yeah, but the if the important room's on the second floor, screw the first floor. Let's just climb in through like a window. Yeah, but there's probably budget. still people up there, right? If I yeah, yeah, that's true. Do you want to get some more firepower before we roll this place over? Either that or do it quietly. I think we can take them. I mean, yeah, we're not we... very stealthy. If we want to do this sneakily, we could go grab Oreo and have her steal the information for mm. us. Uh, Good point. Nah, we, we've kind of thrown stealth to the wind at this point. I think this is it. All right, then let's climb up to the second floor, bust in through a window, and grab the stuff and go. Yeah, I can get behind it. Yes. All right. <laughs> let's, do it. let's do it in this hallway over here so nobody sees it coming. Jeremy, All right, so what you guys do time. know is there, there's a window for the second floor over here. Um, that's the only window in the second floor that you see. Now, I can give you guys a leg up, and then you can pick, you can grab me. All right, up. let me see if I have any spells that will help us with this. I am pretty tall. So you guys are moving around the back of the building. Um, it It's probably around 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Oh, yeah, maybe we should wait for uh, a little uh, darker outside. Yeah, yeah, let's wait till night. Uh, yeah. Okay, you're going to wait till nighttime? Broad daylight, yeah. just busting through the window. Um, Maybe not till nighttime, but maybe, let's just, let's give in. Let's yeah. grab Oreo and have No, Oreo. no, this is our, this is our thing, all right? We can do this. You're right, you're right. We can do this together. Dinner? But not during the middle of the day. During dinner. During dinner, okay, yeah. So, you, where, do you where are you guys going to go in the meantime? First? Then, honestly, let's just hang back at the apartment and let them know what we're going to do, so that if we go missing, they'll know what. Like, okay, okay. Yeah, we can do that. All right, fair enough. I am going to go back to the main map then. Ragu, you have just left. Um, you've just left to puck. Um, and so, what are you going to do next? Um, how long about did that take getting a little tour of uh, the alley scene of the crime? Maybe half an hour. Yeah. So it's like three o'clock. So you, uh, you're uh, you've just left Hapkin. It's about three o'clock. So what's next? Um, and you can say go back and wait um, and fast forward time. That's perfectly fine. Okay. Um, can I take a curse? I'm not going to approach the bad guys' base of operations, but can I go ahead and take a uh, look at the alley scene of the crime? Do I know how long it's been since? Um, it's been a while. Um, let me go ahead and uh, you're going to check out the alley, you said? Yeah. Okay. Let me go ahead and there it is. Um, I have other people with you. They're obviously not here. So you approach the uh, street. You do know that the alley is off of the street, although, um, um, yeah, so you know it's off the street, uh, taking a left um, at the purple building, is what you were told. Okay, taking a left at the purple building. Okay. You see the uh, the you see this street descends. 
you see uh, trash and debris, um, you hear um, you hear uh, footsteps or people walking around from behind you, but you don't hear anything from in front of you. So what are you going to do? I'm going to uh, come down here and uh, be uh, with Char here helping me. I'm going to be uh, looking for uh, clues, you know, to see if I can see the scuffle marks or a little spot of blood, anything, you know, that would tell me where exactly it happened or anything about where it happened. Um, possibly a couple of broken glass bottles if she had dropped them during the mugging. Okay, so you're looking around, you see trash, you don't see any glass bottles. Go ahead and make a survival check to see if you see uh, footprints. Okay, can I get uh, Char's help? Sure. Okay. All right, so you do see that there are uh, footprints. Some of them uh, um, look like they uh, something might have been dragged uh, to the north. They're heading to the north. Okay, you're looking to the north. You see another uh, uh, alleyway kind of uh, curving around. And there you start, you notice that there are uh, scraps of clothing that you notice, bright colored clothing uh, in this pile of trash. And you see what looks like a few copper coins on the ground. So what do you do? I'm going to go over there and investigate. Okay, as you do so, I'm going to need you to make a perception check. Okay, with Char, you can help me out here, buddy. Yep. Okay, you notice several figures that seem to um, be um, kind of prowling around the roofs, uh, kind of around the alley. And uh, as you come forward, you, you, uh, you just notice that they, you know, they come over the roofs and you can kind of see them slowly approaching you. They don't realize yet that you've noticed them. So what do you do? Um, and they're coming from the roofs. Are they all dressed up, all bed? Yeah, they're basically they're they're covering their faces. Uh, they're uh, well, two of them are covering their faces and are are dressed in black uh, or dark blue clothing, covering their uh, their mouths uh, and so on. Um, but one of them seems to be a bit more brazen. You can see that he's obviously fought in his uh, share of battles, and in fact, he is missing an eye and has it wrapped, his head wrapped where that eye is. <laughs> oh, I, uh, I'm sorry, I should, I should be showing yeah. you these. Sorry about that. Yeah, I can You can see start it. seeing them now. Okay. I kind of sigh and kind of, you know, flip my two fingers up as Char flies straight up and away. He just takes off. Okay, where's as Char I, going? Um, Char's going to go circle around back to the library. I know for a fact that somebody's at the library. Okay, so Char's the library, the library is closer. Yeah, the, the library is closer than the apartments or further. Um, actually, let me, uh, let me look on the map. Uh, let's see, you're here. The library's there. It's about the same distance. All right. Um, I will have go to the, uh, go to the library to tell Pico that I'm, uh, I'm not doing so hot. <laughs> Tell him that. Okay. Uh, you have a note that says, uh, Pico, I'm not doing so hot. Yeah. Fair enough. He, he was going to have to pantomime it, but yeah, that note works. Fair enough. Um, in that case, go ahead and roll initiative. Okay. Why am I on char? No. Damn right. Here, I'll delete char. You can uh, try it on yourself. Make sure to click on your own token. Yeah, that's what I think I screwed up. 
Okay, that's a little better. Yeah, still not good. All right, we are now on round one. And the expert Doug, who goes first with the 12, uh, jumps down and um, he uses his, his free action to say, surrender and we won't kill you. What's your, um, and then he, uh, he kind of stands there as if waiting for your response. Um, Thug two jumps, kind of goes around and jumps behind you, uh, pulling out his weapons. And Ragu, how do you respond? All right, I kind of put up my hands and says, uh, look, fellas, I would be, I would be very happy for you to be surrendering to me. It would be making it so much easier than uh, me having to bleed you. Okay, you're attempting to intimidate? Yeah. You do so, but you have disadvantage because you're outnumbered. You can use strength, however. All right, disadvantage. This is intimidate. Okay, it's clear to you that it's not having any effect. So that was your free action. What are you going to do next? All right. Looking dead at Expert Thug 3. I clench my fists tight, pulling out my uh, sword and dagger, taking a big, deep breath in. And as this loud, guttural roar comes out of this already big man, he gets bigger. Okay, how are you getting bigger? In large reduce, I'm 15 feet tall, 2,220 pounds of pissed. Okay, fair enough. And for some reason, I cannot do that really neat uh, expando thing on my token. Uh, we can just do this here. Yeah, because yeah, I am now a large creature. Oh, fair enough. Oh, well, yeah, in that case, we'll just do that. Yep. Uh, that that took an action, right? That most definitely took my action, and since my action was not attacking, I cannot take a bonus action attack at this time, but I am definitely ready. You can see that the the regular thugs look a little nervous, but oh, the, I hope they're intimidated. But the um, the who appears to be the leader, he looks at he looks completely calm, um, and you can tell that he is already battle hardened, and he calmly steps forward and starts chopping at your enlarged form with his scimitar and dagger. All right, and then Ragu, your AC is 17, is that correct? Uh, my AC is 17, however, uh, wait a second, 17, 18, 19. If I, oh wait, will that work? No, if I uh, arcane deflection the 19. Yeah, the 19 would still hit, but it, the 16 would not. Well, the 16, oh, the 16 doesn't hit. hit. Yeah, so. All right, so yeah, I'll just take the hit. All right, so one of the scimitars, uh, uh, bites into your legs for doing eight points of damage. Expert Thug One, seeing the leader attacking without fear, jumps off the roof, moves forward, and does the same. All right. Um, are you going to arcane deflect the 18? Uh, yes, that I can do. So you arcane deflect the 18. However, the dagger comes in to the side low where you have trouble seeing it and does nine points of damage as it digs into your skin. And we are now on round two. And it will take 
unfortunately longer for the bird to get there so we will probably just continue so expert thug three at this point in time uh seeing you uh seeing you already hurt smiles and he moves around to flank and attacks you with advantage all righty so that is a 19 22 and a 20. um actually i'm gonna go ahead and shield that which one uh, um, shield ask yeah shield will take all those attacks plus everything to the end of the round okay yeah uh, the actual spell shield i'm burning a spell slot Okay, fair enough. You burn a spell slot, and that's going to absorb all the damage. Is there a, a limit to how much damage it can take? Well, um, yeah, it, gives it increases a, the it AC gives by a... five, so it makes some misses. Oh, I see. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah, oh, it's the shield spell, Jeremy. It's um, it uh, gives an AC of plus five uh, until the end of the it's... round. Yeah. Okay, fair enough. Oh, that's the wrong one. Sorry. Oh, that was. Yeah, <laughs> it's definitely not tense. There's floating. Misclick. <laughs> yeah, it was a misclick. Sorry. Okay. Okay, that's fine. Um, so it basically lasts until your next turn, I believe, if that's the case. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Expert Thug 2, though, he doesn't know that. Um, and so he's going to try to attack anyway. And so it's a plus 5, you said. So that is a 22 AC, which means that one of those scimitars still hits. Okay. And you take six points of damage. Okay. Um, how, how, wait, how many attacks do these guys have? Cause Three. I'm... They have two scimitars and a dagger. They are uh, CR2 critters. I'm counting nine attacks before the tensor's floating disc uh, message. Yeah. Um... So those three after it add up to 12. What? I've been attacked too many times. Yeah, I'm seeing scimitar, scimitar, dagger, scimitar, scimitar, dagger, scimitar, scimitar, dagger, and floating there, and scimitar, scimitar, dagger. That sounds like four enemies. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. You're, but you're forgetting that. Uh, no, wait, wait. That's weird. I just went, just went through this. I don't understand why. So the expert thug, uh, unfortunately, doesn't tell me whose attacks are each. Okay. Um, I don't know how I did it, but I guess I attacked. I guess I must have run somebody twice. Because I'm just seeing three and two going. Or are we around ahead? Three, one, two, three. Okay. Um, I don't know how I did that, but okay. Um, I guess we won't have expert uh, one go, and you can uh, ignore that last six points. I'll have to watch the video to see how I messed that up so badly. All right, Regu. Uh, so add six more hit points back, and then uh, go ahead. What are you going to do? Okay. I have to read real quick. I apologize. I should be more aware. Oh, wait. No, I know what happened. I'm sorry. You did take that six because it is 12 hits because we are currently on the second round. Okay, yeah. Okay. Yeah, but didn't they not attack until after he did his enlarge? So if he enlarges, then the three thugs go, and then he gets his turn. The expert thug three. Oh, okay. That's fine. Go ahead, Ragu. What are you going to do? Okay. Oh, sorry. Hold on. I got distracted with trying to figure out what you guys were doing. Uh, uh, 20 foot cube. So, 
Oh yeah, that would definitely work. Okay. I'm going to... I'm going to attack Expert Thug 3 to start with. Okay, so what is this web doing? Oh, no, no. Um, I was trying to figure out the size of the web. The web's going to be after I move. I'm going to have to do some fighting first. Okay, go ahead. I, yeah, I was just, I'm sorry. I was planning ahead. Um, I'm going to attack Expert Guard 3, or, or Expert Thug 3, the battle hardened one, with my... Uh, Iridescent Rapier. Okay. And I'm going to Booming Zablade it. Yeah, go ahead. That is. Alright. And that is doing... So, 15 points? No. It's doing 19 points. Okay. In larger dudes, large... I get an extra... Yeah, in larger dudes, I get an extra D4 damage. All right. Okay, and then I'm going to... See, that was 19 points of damage. He's there, he's there, he's there. Yeah, that Can does hurt. I... Yeah. Can I get here? Or are those two people too close together? Um, you are one size big. larger, so I believe you can because you're one size larger. Okay. So I'm just going to step over them. Yeah, exactly. And move to a much better position. Okay. Blocking off the alley, essentially, with them three coming at me. So I come at me. All right, and then my bonus action is unused because I booming bladed. And sure. he is... Is he a hex away? Or no, wait a second. Um, no, I mean, yeah, I mean, he's basically a hex away, yeah. Okay, that's all I was looking for there. He'll have to move forward to attack me. Yeah, he'll have to move forward to attack, that's right. Okay. All right, well, I'm going to skip Expert Thug 1 because of the attack issue. And so we'll just start round 3. And Expert Thug 3 is then going to step forward, so go ahead and do your booming, booming blade. 11 more points. That really hurts him. Um, and then at this point, he is going to attack. He does not have advantage. And the 21 hits for 5 points of damage. Hey, I will take that. And then Expert Thug 2. Oops, that's not what I meant to do. Is going to walk around. Four, five, two, ten. Um, I was trying to block the alley. I didn't know that was passable. Yeah, you, you're. Um, it's it's still a uh, uh def it's still a free hex to pass through. Oh, okay. I, that, that's what I was trying to do. Block that, but okay. I yeah. I oh, okay. So that was your intent. I di yeah. I didn't know what your intent actually was. So yeah, yeah my that alley unfortunately. Looks like it's too big for you to, to block completely. Oh, okay. So that's that's just trash there, but it's not actually blocked. Yeah, he's out. just oh, stepping yeah. through the trash, yeah. Yep, he moves up. Cool, cool, cool. All right. So he is going to take his attacks with advantage. The 24 hits. And you take... Oh, the 17 also hits. Are you going to do your deflection? Uh, Yeah, I will deflect that one. Okay, so just the 24 hits then for 8 slashing damage. All right, Ragu, you are now flanked. What are you going to do? I just got rid of being flanked. Okay. This. I'm going to swing my iridescent rapier at... Uh, uh, Thug 3, the leader guy. Okay, go for it. You hit. 19. All right. And um, I'll roll damage. Okay, so 12 points. 12. And then I am going to... You got your D4. Be... Yes. 
Okay. That's for being big. And then I roll the D8. Hold on a second. Is this for your um, maneuver? Yeah. Attack on your turn, extend one spirit to die, and then try to grapple the target as a bonus action. Okay. Add the okay, spirit so I add die that. to your strength athletics check. All okay, right. so go ahead and make your check. And because I'm big, I have advantage on all strength checks. So, yeah, so this is at advantage plus yep, eight. Yep, he so is grappled. Roll 28. All right, now, in the grappling, can I grapple and ungrapple him in one action or one turn? No, I'm pretty sure you're doing one or the uh, Oh, actually, yeah, because this is your action already. So you've grappled him. That's just what you did. He is currently grappled until you, at least until your next turn. Okay. My intent is to pick him up over my head, grappled, and slam him down onto Thug 2. Okay. okay. So he is currently in your hands to do that. Um, and next time you have a free action, you can do that. Okay. Yeah, because my bonus action was the grapple. Okay, so I've got Thug 3 in the air. All right. Yep. Technically, I'm not actually uh, flanked anymore. That's correct. Except you are. Bastards. All right. So he has advantage, so he's taking his three attacks. All right. The 25 hits, because uh, that's critical, so you take 12 points of damage from that. Um, I'm going to go ahead and shield. You... The shield gives you an AC of 19, right? No, no. Uh, arcane deflection oh, arc gives me 19. Okay, so uh, that gives you an AC of 23 then. Yeah. Right? Um, so the 23 still hits, but the 19 does not. Okay. Make sense? Yes. All right, so that's another five points of slashing damage. All right, eight and five. So uh, a total of 17. Okay. And we are now on round four. Char is quickly flying, but this these are seconds, so unfortunately this is going to end one way or another before he gets there. Yeah. The expert thug is currently being held by you. Over he, my head. He could either try to get away or try to stab you in the head. And he figures trying to get away probably is not likely, so he's just going to stab you in the head. Two of those succeed. One's a critical, so you take 15 points of damage, um, basically hitting around your head and uh, shoulder areas, cutting them up. And Expert Thug 2 also has advantage and is an attempt to attack you as well. Uh, but even with advantage, oh, that 17 would hit, but you have your deflect on, which blocks it, so he hits with nothing. All right, Raku, it is now your turn. All right. Um, okay, um, I've got this uh, expert thug three. I want to slam him as hard as I can into expert thug two. How okay, would, so that would, would be yeah. an improvised weapon if I remember it correctly. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to do the incredible Hulk slamming Loki around on the floor several times. Yeah, so let me go ahead and open up the um, the combat reference to see how improvised weapon works. Uh, let's see action. Improvise action. No, that's not it. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Okay, I don't have that here. So just go ahead and um, go ahead and roll a uh, d6 bludgeoning, like you were punching somebody, and then you're going to add your strength bonus. And both, if you hit expert thug two. 
um, then uh, they'll both take damage. But regardless, Expert Thug 3 is going to take the damage. Um, so to hit Expert Thug 2, it's basically your attack um, plus, I believe, your strength bonus. Okay. So it'd be... To, to see if you hit. Like like if you're punching somebody. So that's, it's the same uh, attack bonus as punching somebody. Okay, that'd be an unarmed strike. Yeah. I can use my brass knuckles for that because it'd be the same thing. Okay. Okay, so Expert Thug 2 does manage to get out of the way uh, as you come and you slam down Expert Thug 3. But Expert Thug 3 hits the ground, is prone, and takes your D6 plus your strength bonus. Okay. So he takes it. D6 plus my strength bonus, which is four, which makes it nine, plus one. So he takes ten points of damage hitting the ground. Okay. So he hits the ground. Um, he is He's currently prone, prone um, but still conscious and alive, unfortunately. Uh, is that the end of your turn? No. Uh, as my bonus action with my left hand, I'm going to reach into my pouch, pull out a bottle, and quaff it. Okay, go ahead and spend that. Okay. All right. See, that is... Because Expert Thug 20. 2 dodged, you are still flanked, and you are being attacked. Okay. With advantage. All right, so two of those attacks hit. Um, it has been your turn already, so your arcane deflection is no longer on, but even if it was, the 23 would have hit. So you take 6 from the 23 and 8 from the uh, critical for okay, a Okay, hold on a second. Yeah, okay, hold on a second. I'm still adding. Oh, okay. Um, plus 4 is 16. Okay, so that's 20. So... That would be straight. Okay. And then 14, you said I take? Yes. All right. So. So you're back to six, from my understanding. 11. Oh, 11? Okay. Yeah, because I didn't add the plus to that, because that was just the roll 4d4. I had to add four and then um, subtract. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Anyway. That's fine. I believe you. All right. Expert Thug 2 spends half his movement to get back up. He doesn't need it because he's just going to lay it to you. Alrighty. Alrighty, so the 20 hits, unless you're going to do another arcane deflection? Um, Yeah, I'm going to do shield. Oh, shield. Okay, oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Uh, but the 25 still hits for another 9 points of damage as he cuts into you. Four. Which would and give you uh, four. three points, I believe. Eleven down to three. And then Expert Thug 2 is attempting to finish you off. All right. And he does five points of damage as you fall unconscious. Um, can I go ahead and burn a fate point to not take it? Uh, yeah, you certainly can. So you're down to one hit point. Okay. It is now your turn. You have one hit point. Uh, come on. All right. Sorry, everything's kind of frozen at the moment. I'm not sure why. I'm going to step over this way. Say, screw this, you guys. I am not letting you do this to me. And now I cast web. All right. Well... As you move, um, I believe these guys still get their opportunity attacks. Oh, shit. Yeah, you're right. Um, you would have known that before moving, so are you still going to yeah. move? Because all three of them get opportunity attacks. Well, well, here's the thing. is If I move... Yeah, I'm, I'm fine here. either way. I just, you just, yeah. you, you know that, so you can decide now if you wanna, if you wanna do that. Yeah, um, my point is to try and get out of the way, but I can still stay within melee of him. Okay. 
and him without taking opportunity attacks. Fair I'd enough. still want to get an opportunity attack from him, and my reaction is ready with a uh, with a third shield if I need to. Um, he does not have advantage, so that's a six. He misses. Okay. Now I cast web, and that would encase... All right. Uh, so what do they have to do, or what's their save if they get one? Hold on a second. All right. It's a 20-foot cube. Uh, layers of the four. On a, okay, dexterity saving throw. On a failed save, they're restrained. Until it breaks free. On a, If it succeeds, it's no longer restrained. Okay, so go ahead. and What's your uh, spell uh, save um, DC? 15. So they have to make a DC 15 dexterity saving throw. Yeah. Okay, unfortunately they all make it. Which means that, yeah, you attack them all, but unfortunately um, they are not stuck. Um... Yeah, so uh, on their turn, though, they have to make um, a uh, dexterity saving throw. Oh, actually, I think I did that too soon then. I think, I, I think that I'm supposed to do that on their turn. So never mind. Um, we'll just continue on, and they'll each have to make it on their own. Okay, okay. so um, the uh, leader has to make his dexterity saving throw. Um, wait a second. That was my Oh, you're that not was done yet? My action. Okay. Yeah, ahead. that was my action. And I'm going to uh, to because uh, until I know whether they're stuck or not, I can't actually leave without taking a whole bunch of uh, of uh, tax of opportunity. And since I spelled, then I can't disengage. But uh, I'm going to um, second wind. That's what it is. Okay. Okay, you get a second wind. Yeah. Makes sense. Uh, okay. but not very well. All right, you have five hit points. And then at this point in time... Uh, seven. Seven, all right. At I'm this point in time, um, the uh, leader is going to make his deck save because he's starting his turn inside the webs, and he will then attempt to leave the webs, which I believe makes it rough terrain, but he doesn't have far to move, so it doesn't matter. He did not make it, though, so he is restrained. So let me give him a uh, marker there. Um, can he actually attack if he's restrained? No, he just used his oh, action. No, he's, he's wrapped up. Uh, so, okay, yeah, he's stuck. All right, Expert Thug 2 has to make a similar save. This might be your ace in the hole, how you get out of this situation. We'll see. No, I don't want to apply damage. Tell me what the save is. Sorry, my roll 20 is acting up. There you go. Tell me what the save is. Okay, so he fails as well, so he's restrained. All right, Ragu, it is your turn, and uh, right. the two... Uh, Figures in front of you are currently restrained. So what are you going to do? Okay. Mm they are restrained. I am going to hit thug number three with my attack. Okay. You have advantage because he's restrained. Mm, yes. And you hit. All right. I'm going to be rolling damage, but I do not want to kill him. I want to uh, knock him unconscious. Okay. Just so you know, because I'm getting close to his hit points. Right. So that's 12. 13 points. Okay. He is still conscious and active, but he is really close to death, or at least going unconscious. Is that the end of your turn? Uh, no, I'm going to reach into my pocket and drink another potion. Okay. 
Thug One, he's also in uh, inside of your uh, web, correct? Yes. Okay, so he has to make a save. Which he does not, so he is restrained. All right. Okay, we start with round seven. And Expert Thug Three is now attempting to break free. He has to make a strength check against your save DC to break three. Uh -huh. So it's a 15. He does not have advantage, so that's an eight. Uh, and he does not succeed. Expert Thug Two is doing the same. And he also fails, so he is still stuck. All right, Raku, they are struggling to get out of your web, but failing. What are you going to do? Um, going to go ahead and take uh, my final attack at uh, Expert Thug 3 to knock him unconscious. Okay, you still have advantage. And you hit can you do three points? You certainly can. He is now unconscious. Okay, and I am going to uh, use my bonus action to drink another potion. Okay. Is that the end of your turn? Yes. All right. Expert Thug 1 is going to make his uh, strength check with a 15. And he fails, so he is still inside, and we begin round eight. <laughs> All right, Expert Thug 3 is unconscious, so I delete him. Expert Thug 2 is going to make his strength save. <laughs> we'll see if any of them can escape. Yes, he did. So he is no longer restrained. So he moves out of your uh, webbing. It is um, difficult terrain, but it doesn't matter because he's already out. And that was his action to do that, so he can't attack me yet. That is correct. So one of them has gained, gotten three. What free? What are you going to do, Regu? I'm going to stomp this guy. Go for it. I do not have advantage. But I am going to be. And he dodges. And then. And you hit. For 12 points of damage. Uh, hold on a second. For. For b being embiggened? Yeah. Fair enough. Is that the end of your turn? Um, yes, yes it is. All right, Expert Thug 1 is going to try one more time to try to break free. Finally, he does. And so he is no longer, um, he's no longer uh, trapped. But rather than running towards you, he is running away. And if I understand correctly, how many hexes does he have to move to get out from where he is now? Um, 20 cubic feet. So let me see if I can try and... That's 20 feet. That's about four hexes worth. Um, yeah. If, the whole thing. yeah, but where's the center? I think the, center... Um, the center was like right here, um, right in between them all. That would catch him. And, uh, okay, so yeah, four yeah, hexes. Okay. It was like, yeah, right so in the middle of two, four, They were all six, less than a full hex. So away. he da Oh, no, he used his action. So that's as far as he can get. Okay. Okay. All right. Round nine. Thug two is going. He's going to attack. It's not the smartest thing in the world for him. And he misses. And he's already regretting his actions. All right, Raku, what are you going to do? Um, I cannot see. Hold on a second. That's it. Let's see what I can do here. All right, I'm going to attack. All right. Uh, two. Go for it. 
You hit. All right, this is going to be a stack up here. Okay. 12 piercing. Make sure to roll your d4. Yep, That's your plus, d4? All right. Yep, four for being strong. Fair enough. Um, we're going to go ahead and give him another eight points of damage, and he's going to have to make a DC 15 strength check. Save, you mean, but yeah. Uh, is it a save or a check? One second. I'm pretty sure it's, um... it's going to be a save. Yeah, on a failed save. So anyway, he succeeded. All right, so he's not knock prone, but he still takes the eight damage. Yeah, he took it. Okay, and then uh, I will use my dagger on him as well. Hold on. Yep, go for it. Okay. Yep. And you hit. For a solid ten points. 13. Uh, 11. 11, yeah. What's with all the ones? Come on, D4. Be nicer. <laughs> it's just a D4. Yeah, fair enough. All right, is that the end of your turn? Uh, yes. All right, so Thug 1, uh, one more uh, hex of rough terrain, so that takes two of his movement. F goes five, and then dashes. Uh, and basically gets around and turns in an alley and is attempting to lose lose you lose sight of him uh, and he, as he runs off. Okay. Yeah, I don't have a card to follow and I'm busy. Round ten. Thug two is he's committed. He's just too late for him, so he's just going to go all in. He knows uh, that I will run him down. Are you going to do a shield? I oh, know yes. you can't because uh, that gives you an AC of 23. He rolled 23, so they hit anyway. So never mind. It's not working. Okay. All right, 15 points of damage. All right. He looks worried as he slices into you, but you're still not dead. And you can hear him thinking almost, why won't you die? Raggy, what do you I am blaming. Pissed off, just fire and smoke coming out of my ears. Uh, um, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and hit him. Okay. And you hit. For another 12 points. He's still alive. Um, oh, roll your... Oh, there you go. Oh, that D4, so close. He has two hit points. All righty. I'm going to go ahead and do it. You're going to do what? Um, oh, two, okay. Wait a second. For, uh, no, no, I don't think that's damage. I think that's... One second. Cripple. It's a superiority dice to my strength athletics check. Oh, okay. It doesn't do damage. Okay. Um, okay, that's fair enough. Um, yeah, the... the the pushing attack and the trip attack do damage. The grappling strike gives me a better chance to grab it. Okay, I actually damaged that guy before, but it doesn't matter. You would have taken him out soon afterward, but now I know. All right, um, DC 15 check. Oh, no, you're making the DC 15 check. Sorry, go ahead. Um, no, it's a, it's a contestant. Um, so I do my athletics check, and I add two to it. Come on. 26. He's got to yep. beat a 26. Yep. Yep. Wait, you said it's a, uh, a, a strength check of some Yeah. Um, yeah, it's a grappling you... as a bonus. I mean, 24 action. is pretty high, but I think you get an advantage on that. You're right, I do, but does it matter? You got it. Uh, right. If you crit or something, I mean, you could get yeah. higher. Although, Although, okay, if you got a 17, it doesn't yeah, matter. Yeah, uh, on a grapple, a crit doesn't do anything. But uh, anyway, you got him. Good, because I still have my movement. I turn and throw him back into the middle of the web. <laughs> All, right. All right, you do so. And nothing happens until the beginning of his turn. Yep. All right, Thug 1 is continuing to run off. Yeah, he's, I can't uh, catch him. He's long gone. Um, Thug 2 is conscious, but in the web, so he has to roll again. He just got out of this, too. But he makes it this time. He's not taking it lying down. One, two, three, 
So that's his movement. He spins. That was his action. So that's where he's stuck there. All right. Adam. All, All right. you had to do is stay in the web, and you might have been able to breathe a little bit longer. He, you can see he's just trying to run. And he dodges as he runs. That didn't do your turn? Nope, you got him. Go ahead. Can you do at least two points of damage? You do so. Um, are you trying to avoid killing him, or do you not care? Um, I was going to... Yeah, I do want to avoid killing him. I'm going to go ahead and knock him unconscious, too. All right. He is now unconscious. Using my web, I just kind of grab and wrap up these two guys, throw them over my back, and start stomping down the street, grumbling, brat and frat and big and bastard guys and fricker frickin', you know, grabbing a third potion out of my belt and drinking it. Um, you start to head down the street, but... Uh... I do disarm them and, you know, make sure they're tied up and everything. Uh, you did not, um, you realized though that you didn't get a chance to uh, actually investigate because you were looking, you saw a couple of things, then they jumped out and you were distracted. So do you want to do that oh. before you leave? Yes, actually, I do want to tie them up real good, nice and tight. They're still unconscious. I'm going to shrink back down to normal size. Um, okay. Like I said. I'll go ahead and do that for you. Okay. So yeah, so what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? Um, um, just a second. Oh, I can close the combat. I'm thinking, uh, making sure they're tied up nice and tight. Um, disarming them, making sure they don't have any hidden blades to cut out of the rope or anything like that. I'm going to go ahead and uh... Let's see. Okay, so you're... There's uh, barrels we'll... up here? Yeah, so uh, we'll go ahead and pause you there real quick because you go and you're, you're tying them up. While you're tying them up, Pico, you're in the library and um, suddenly... Um, Ragu's owl flies through a window and lands at the table where you're studying. And you uh, see he's got a note attached to him. Okay, I take a look. And um, uh, what is it? It said Ragu. Um, it was it was very short. It was like not doing so hot. Yeah, that was. What it. was there, what was the exact thing? Yeah, yes, that's what it is. Uh, yeah, not doing so hot is what it says. Oh crap! Uh, all right, I quickly scram scramble everything up. Ivala, I gotta go. I'll be back again. <laughs> Taking off. Okay, so where are you going? I'm following Char. Okay, Char is flying directly to the alley. Fair enough. That's where I last was. All right, so you are currently heading to the alley, back to the alley. Um, all right, um, Ragu, you finished uh, tying up the uh, figures. Char lets you know yep. telepathically that he has made contact and Pico's on the way. So what's next? All right, were those barrels up there? Um, you see the trash and you see a water barrel. Uh, if I dump out the water barrel, can I stuff the guys into it? I'll cram them in. I don't care if their legs don't bend that way. They do now. I'll, Into the say, I'll say yes, but if you do, if you cram them in that tightly, you're probably going to be breaking things, possibly their necks. Oh, no, not their necks, but yeah. I was, all right, are there two barrels then? Um, Not really. You just see the one. Well, how big are these barrels in terms of height? Because... Uh... I remember the barrel that uh, Shadiversity was using for this little river test was huge. I mean, like, two people could, in fact, sit in one. Um, yeah, that's reasonable. Um, it, yeah, because it's a water barrel uh, meant to catch rainwater, so it'll probably be fairly big. So, uh, thinking of it that way, there's only two of them left. So, yeah, you probably can't fit them in there without killing them. All right, I, I have to cram the them in there with... Yep, I dump out the water so they don't drown. I cram them in there. I go through the trash to find a lid. And I've got the barrel on its side with a lid on it, 
rolling it down the street, just getting this far or wherever when they finally show up. Okay. Um, anyway, while you're up there doing that, you noticed uh, scraps of uh, bright clothing, dried blood, blood, and a couple of coins on the ground. Do you do anything else while you're up there? Um, I know what I, I, don't I, think I mean up there. I mean up there. Yeah, I don't believe anybody else is going to come back very soon. And if Char already gave me a ping, then I'm pretty much waiting for backup. Okay. So uh, okay. So you're just going to wait in the alley with your barrel um, while you're waiting for Pico. Yeah, and Char told me that you, they're they're on their way. Okay, uh, Pico, you just went straight there, correct? Yeah, um, it had occurred to me to try to grab somebody else, but I don't know what kind of time crunch we're dealing with here. Okay, you show up to find Ragu bloodied. Uh, you see his clothing and armor. His clothing is torn. His armor is dented. Um, you got see blood everywhere, and you see that um, he's rolling a barrel with the lid on it down the street. I got what jumped. What on earth happened to you? I got jumped. Uh, normally I could have taken them out, but they kept surrounding me. You know, one of the bastards got away. <sighs> so, so the only reason they did this is because they actually fought back? Say that again? And get the blood out of my ear? Uh, no, seriously, David, I did not hear you. Oh. Uh, it was a snide comment regarding what you had said anyway, so. Uh. So what exactly happened? I came here to the alley because this is where it had happened with the... Uh, Start looking with my the... shoulder. Yeah, with, you know, with, with the attacking of the old lady Lavinia. And uh, I saw some stuff back here, but as soon as I got there, these guys jumped down off the roof and attacked me. So I had to beat them down, but uh, I did not necessarily want to kill them. And then one coward got away whilst the other two were stabbing me in the back. And yeah, you will notice that most of the damage is, you know, knives in my back. <laughs> Rat bastards. I just sigh. Um, well, thank you for coming so very quickly. Uh, there's some stuff up here. Maybe we can go look. I take the barrel and I roll it over onto its side so it's not going to roll away, making sure it's upside down to make them even more uncomfortable. Okay. Well, if you got ambushed here, I don't want to spend any more time than necessary, so we're going to have to make this quick. I'd rather had Oreo here. Um, let me take a quick look first. Um... I can't control me. I'm out of control. Oh, you, you you don't have control of your token? Hold on. Let me refresh just in case it's a glitch with roll 20. But anyway, my plan is... Um, yeah, it looks like I have control now. So my plan is to climb up the building onto the roof and uh, do a quick look around. Char, you want to give me some help? Arr! All right, so yeah, you look around, and over here, you see scraps of bright clothing, dried blood, and a couple of copper coins on the ground. Um, I'm more interested in the roofs and alleyways looking for people, making sure that we don't have an immediate threat before I pop down. You don't see anybody uh, close by. I mean, you, in the streets nearby, you see people walking around, but you don't see anybody in the alleyways. I can send Char up just to do loops around us to make sure nobody's sneaking in, and he'll tell me if that makes you feel better. Yes. Okay. All right, well, I'll go There's ahead and uh, drop down. Okay. So why are you here? This is where the old lady Lavinia was mugged. She was sounds like a hit. And as soon as I get here to look for clues, I get mugged. So yes, there's some important things. Let's look around here. Well, I'm glad you're okay, but this might be a little bit of a hint that it helps to have other people around. 
Well, yes, I should not have been by myself, but, well. And as you think back, you realize that if it wasn't for your potions, there's no way you would have survived. Yeah, I know, definitely. <laughs> I was drinking potions left and right. Speaking All of, right. um, no, I'm okay now. Yeah, the potion of greater healing. All right, so Pico, what are you doing? Um, I'm going to go ahead and start looking around at the alley. You said this is, where, wait a minute. So you said this is where she was murdered. What do you know about all this? And I basically explain everything to, uh, to uh, Pico about how she was walking down the way after buying the bottles. And uh, two big men jumped her and drug her into the alley to beat her up. And I think it was a uh, professional hit, or, or at least a uh, a uh, targeted hit. And then poor uh, Tolkien, the clothing maker, he, he finds her. And then he goes ahead and uh, listens to what she has to say. And she tells him that uh, it was on purpose and, you know, the about the... Uh, the boss, Raff, Raffalo, or whatever his name is, and then there's um, some uh, guys from the uh, Lone Shark place. They uh, show up and threaten him to not say anything, so it really was the guards being bought off. So this had to be a professional hit to take uh, the lady's possessions and everything else. Okay, well, I guess I'll look around the alley, see if I can spot any signs of foul play. Well, you definitely see lots of signs of struggle, um, some of them very, very recent, uh, but also some older signs as well. Um, like I said, you see dried blood in addition to the more recent wet blood um, and scraps of bright clothing. You see um, uh, about three copper coins that were left behind. And odd that there are coins just sitting out in plain sight. Yeah, they're yeah. just on the ground. Three copper coins. Are you going to do a more um, thorough search? or Because um, that's what your uh, passive perception got you. Yeah, I want to look around more carefully. Okay, go ahead and make a perception check. Uh, if I can help, I will. Okay. And I'll give my... Allow me to offer myself some expert guidance. <laughs> um, oh, wow, well, that's actually a pretty good roll already. Um, so 27, I'll try again anyway in case I can get higher, and nope. All <laughs> Take right. the first one. So you're searching around, and it blended in with the trash, but you do find a, uh, a crumpled scrap of paper with barely legible words. What you can see is the following. You can see it in the chat. Okay, well, that's that sounds like that place you mentioned. And um, you think that this scrap of paper was um, pro was dropped um, possibly by one of these people, although it could have been uh, it could have been from before as well. It's hard to tell. Yeah, it seems weird that the copper coins were left behind. Um, I'm going to pick one up with Mage Hand and kind of inspect it. Looks like a regular copper coin. I'm just going to use Mage Hand to toss them in the corner. Um, I don't see anything else. Nope. Well, let's go find Oreo and... Oh, but you're saying, did you toss those coins in the corner, or are we keeping those? Mm, we're tossing them in the corner. I'm a little bit suspicious about money being conveniently floating around in a rough part of town. Um, and I take the copper coins and tie them into a little, um, you know, put them in a little cloth and tie the cloth together, just like a little temporary sack to hold the coins. I can have Chard place them somewhere else, but to be left out in the open for somebody else to wander by and pick up before we come back is not a good idea. Well, I kind of don't care if anybody does that, because if there's a problem with... Either the coins are mundane and they're just three copper pieces, or there's something significant about them and we don't want them anywhere near us. 
but there's also divination magic to find out who was the last one to be owning them and finding out their reason they are here. Um, you have something in mind for that? It would cost, because I cannot be casting it. All right, well, have Char dump them somewhere safe that's nowhere near anywhere we normally frequent. I guess on a roof somewhere would work. Yeah, I was, that's what I was thinking. So, um, like on one of these close by roofs, if there's a little nook or a cranny where you can just put them, so they're close by where we found them, but not just no. get picked up by anybody. Okay. I'm thinking more like on the spire of some really tall building, like a church or something. Oh, yeah, can do that. Okay, yeah, you can find a nearby uh, large building and put them up there, that's fine. Okay. Yeah, putting them on the roofs of the places you said these guys jumped down from doesn't sound like a great idea. Okay. All right, well, let's go and what did you say was in this barrel again? Answers. When I start rolling, I flip the barrel back on its side and start rolling it as we walk away. All let's right. Let's go find Oreo. We right. will need some place to get answers. Take you back to the map. All right, so what are you guys planning on doing? You're rolling a barrel down the street. My plan is to go find Oreo. Okay. Um, where would you look? Uh, she said she went back to the apartment, as far as I recall. Okay. So you spend probably about an hour to get there. Um, by the time you get there, it's probably around 4.30. And when you arrive... You find um, Galen and Devok and um, I are there as well. Okay, so you all show up together. So what do you do? I walk in the door. Dried blood is still attached to me everywhere. <laughs> yeah, they everybody kind of looks at you and then quickly turns as if they didn't say anything. Uh, Galen... Uh... Can you do something about this? Yeah, I was already getting up to do my healer's kit on you. Let me roll a d6. Maybe we need even more. But uh, to put things in perspective, I put uh, Ragu's token on the map so you can see Galen. Wow, well, I am. Yeah, apparently he thought the death spirits weren't enough of a challenge. All right, well, that's not very much, but you get six plus your maximum hit die back. Okay, 12. And while Galen's attending to Ragu's wounds, I'm going to go find Oreo and knock on the door. Yep, um, I'm here. I'll, I'm already with you guys. It's all good. Okay. And I'm about Jesus. one third. So I'm going to throw a Cure Wounds at level three down on you. Okay. Oh, that is so sad. My rolls have been awful today. Well, that's what you get. Another 13, Regu. The rest will have to just come from sleep or hit die. Okay. And actually, Regu, considering how hard that fight was, it was like 11 or 12 rounds. You came yeah. close to dying multiple times. I'm yeah. going to make you have you make a constitution save. A constitution save. Yep. Hey, you might be a little wee little bit tuckered out, I'm guessing. Okay, you feel a bit tired, but you pull yourself up and avoid gaining a level of exhaustion. Okay. Uh, but yes, definitely a rest. I, I, I go ahead and clean myself up best I can. So what I would suggest is that um, since you're all together, everybody tell everybody else what their what their plans are, etc. While you have the chance. Um, well, I think we have a um, I think we have a nice little chat to have here. The question is: Is this going to be a friendly chat or a not so friendly chat? Are there people listening in? What does that mean? 
<laughs> I think it will be a friendly enough chat. We're going to be offering a woman money. What? And oh. <laughs> She has in her possession, she has in her possession, the stolen goods of a little old lady who has been murdered. We are trying uh, to find out the murderer. Well, we have a good idea, but we need more proof. So but on the same they... time, we need to take this ring that this woman got, and it's covered in the old lady's blood. You know, she... You know, to be receiving the, the the stolen things off a off a dead woman is very not yeah. good. So. Wait a minute. I think, I think that's the wrong conversation. I'm talking about your two friends. Oh no! Can we do that here? Are we okay with that? You don't mind doing it here at the apartment? What? No, oh, that's, that's not a good idea. Do it somewhere else. I, I don't want you to. Bring I wanted over. to find out if your idea of a conversation would be best done with a paladin. Oh. Uh, perhaps. I am thinking you could be very much helping us with your zoning of truth. Me? <laughs> they want you to help them find some hooker that killed an old lady and stole something? No, not the uh, hooker. It was a group uh, of Lone Shark Mafia. Huh? Whatever, yeah, I... I yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Ragu, yeah, man. I... start at the beginning when it comes to telling a story. Yeah. Okay, so uh, remember Ragu's friend Gimbal? Yes, the uh -huh. little tinker guy. Oops, yeah. sorry about that, guys. He had a lady friend who met with an unfortunate accident. It turns out that... Actually, let's find somewhere else to talk about this. Yeah. Oh, I know where we can go to talk about it. I do not think it has been reoccupied. Hmm. The well. <laughs> we gotta That's go in the long well? Distance, and it's gonna look a little odd taking a... Down there. I think we could just well, shut the doors and like be quiet, maybe whisper. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's just do that. We'll just go up to the room and then we'll figure it out from there. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, I go so, get my barrel, you know, sheep it up onto my back, start slowly going up with the barrel. As you're going towards your room with the barrel, the innkeeper kind of comes around. Um, Ragu, um, yes. it's unusual for someone to be taking a barrel into their room. You can store it. Um, you can store it uh, uh, down here. I'll, I can have a place for you. I'm thirsty, and I'll be finishing it soon, but I can bring the empty down if you like. Okay. What exactly is in that barrel? I'll <laughs> step up and be like, he's filled out all the proper paperwork. There's nothing to worry about here. Uh, he looks at you quizzically as you roll a uh, persuasion check. <laughs> yes. Neat. <Very> good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And I'm going to help them. It's like it's part of an investigation. Oh, are you giving me help? Okay, right. fair enough. And expert guidance. Okay. Allow me and off expert my expert gu guidance. Oh, so I would I love... always micromanage somebody. I would love your expert <laughs> guidance. I'm going to need it, too. <laughs> so we're rolling for. Yeah. Uh, uh, right. He looks like, oh, okay, I'll trust you. Uh, just make sure I don't regret it, please. And then he walks away. All right, sweet. Let's get that All upstairs. Right. So as soon as we're up in the room, okay, I'll try and make a long story short. Gimbal had a lady friend who ended up getting murdered. Um, come to find out that, um, well, the reason we found this out is she had this ring that Gimbal was trying to recover that he ultimately thought Rex might have a use for. But um, it occurred to us maybe there's some sort of uh, crime that needs to be resolved here. So we found out she was murdered, or accurately right, who did. And then he found out that uh, some people were going to try and add him to the kill count, which is why he's looking so lovely right now. So if I'm understanding correctly, our would-be murderers may already be experienced murderers are right here, sealed in for your protection inside this very container. So we need to find out what they know about the murder, why they tried to murder Ragu, and maybe you shut down this whole murder, loan shard, property theft, fraud type thing, and get a ring out of the deal. All right, cool. What I would recommend um, is Galen and friends that uh, um, you take the opportunity to tell them of your plans as well. Yeah, I was just going to get to that. So uh, I'd be willing to help with the interrogation. Um, Ayer and I have been doing our own 
along with Devok, we've been doing our own interrogations today. Uh, you can uh, say we... that. You could say that. Yeah, that's one right mm -hmm. uh, We've been doing this kind of catch and release style type like thing with uh, some drug dealers. Because uh, a friend of Ayer and I uh, asked us to help combat the, uh, the blue spice drug problem in the city. So we're trying to take down this, this drug ring and we've been kind of just catching their dealers, getting all the information and letting them go. I'm trying to remember how exactly we got involved in this. I remember our first goal was uh, to further <laughs> our movement. But then well, I like, well, I what happened know. was there's yeah. some some of our this is guy Gadrek who's yeah, a, a with our of the church yeah, yeah. And he wanted he he, those, uh, he was yeah. he, his he's comes from a trouble past with drugs and he wants to get drugs off the streets so, you know oh, help right. him out. so we have to murder all the drug dealers so, so we don't have to well, but that's, that's just how we are you know, taking it upon ourselves you know it, things happen it's not our so fault. galen you remember that one of the things he said is he believes that the noble houses are somehow involved. oh yes that's right so there's this whole conspiracy with the nobles and we have them located to like two kind of central bases that we're gonna check out stuff like that uh yeah we've got a bunch of drugs too so that's neat we'll yeah we do have a lot of drugs now we'll have to turn yeah them or yeah. Yeah, unless any of you want to like test them or something, I don't know what you alchemists do. But that's a great idea, actually. Let's dissect what's in this. I mean, what dissect? Dissect. What are we dissecting? The drug. I see what. That might I, actually I... help us with um with finding out about the supplier if we know actually what it's made of. Oh yeah yeah. I, yeah. I, I do have alchemy and some alchemy supplies if it would be helping with your investigation. All right, like, so yeah, yeah, I, toss, I toss Ragu a bag of uh, bag of stuff. Yeah, but at the very pressing moment, we have two people in the better breathing. Oh, okay. We we'll, we'll deal with questions. this later. Ayer, you want a good cop, bad cop him? Uh, right now, the guy in the, the thing? Yeah, he's in a barrel. Oh, this guy. Yeah, we can do that. All right. I pop open the barrel, and I'm going to go ahead and take out, what was it, thug number one or two? Uh, three is the one you want as far as the leader. Oh, yeah, three is definitely the leader. But we're going to try this guy first because that leader is battle-hardened. And I unfortunately know that standard interrogation tactics will not work on him. Well, in that case... Unless you want to try him first. I already know that. Well, we can start with the other. I thought it was Thug 2, but okay, it's Thug yeah. Not 3. Okay. Thug Not 3. Yeah. Okay. I pull him out and slam him down, and you can see there's somebody else in the barrel as well. I cram two people in there. I just kind of slam the lid back down. Oh, okay. All right, here, let me we'll let me help guy you guys uh, out here a little bit as far as the well, what, uh, what do I what am I trying goes. to what am I trying to what am I trying to get this guy to tell us, Ragu? Uh, information about the murder of um, of uh, Lavinia. Lavinia, a very nice old lady who ran the apothecary, Lavinia. You killed her. And if you didn't, you know who did. Anyway, there's what they look like. Um, you notice that um, they're not exactly the same Galen, but there is a similarity with the way the thug is dressed. Hmm. They must be part of the same, like, mercenary group or something. Some, probably. That's no, that's another question to ask them. All right, so they're currently unconscious, so what are you going to do? All right, well, let's wake them up. Mm -hmm. Okay. So how are you going to do that? Uh, I or cast Warriors Awaken on him. All right, I got it. I uh, cast Warriors Awaken. Okay, describe how that works. Well, you uh, take him by the shoulders and take your dominant hand and slap him across the face. Okay. Ah. You do so. And, uh, um, yeah, he, uh, Thug 2 is the one you're doing it to, right? Mm-hmm. All right. Hey, not 3, I think it was. Yeah. Yeah, not yeah. 3. Okay. Uh, so he, he, he kind of groggily wakes up, and he looks around, and you just hear him whisper, oh, crap. <laughs> Wait, hey, what is it we need to know from this guy again? I, I got it. I, I got it. 
Um, I'm just gonna sit there and just start running the uh, my blades together. You know, just that whole scraping, sharpening sound. He looks around I... and he shrugs, and he says, uh, "Don't bother. Just I don't know much. I just do what I'm told. But whatever. Just ask me, and I'll let you know the best I can." All right, sweet. So we want to know about the murder of this woman named Lavinia. Lavinia. <laughs> Lavinia. 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 Yeah. Not really, really ringing any bells. Um, I pull out the picture of Lavinia and Gimbal. Yeah, uh, she looks vaguely familiar. Um, oh, uh she ran that oh that apothecary oh yeah 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 okay yeah um well uh, unfortunately there was some um negotiations that happened um she refused to make a sale apparently um i think it was she, i think they were trying to get her to sell her shop i'm not sure they were trying to get her to sell she was in debt and they were going to forgive her debt all she had to do was uh give them her shop but she kept refusing and then um well uh i wasn't involved directly but my understanding is, is that uh she was made to um comply one way or another hmm. um you had better be a little bit more clear holding my dagger directly in front of his left eyeball. I want you to make me see. Okay, go ahead and make exactly. a um, go ahead and make an intimidation check. Yep. Uh, strength yep. intimidation? Yep. Okay, he's looking at your dagger and you can tell he's he's uh, you know, he's scared. Um, but he kind of shrugs and he says, well, you know, you can stab me in the eye. It's going to suck, but I don't, still don't know much. Uh, I was, uh, I wasn't hired to take her out. I was hired to take out somebody else. Uh, well, I guess that would be you because, um, um, you were seen, uh, at the, uh, at the shop and, um, I'm my understanding is you were seeking some jewelry and then which would have been fine if you just left it alone and not come back nothing would have happened but instead you started uh, talking um, you started talking to someone else um, what's his name Tapkin um, we had his uh, place uh, you know we had spies nearby and uh, well I uh, it was pretty clear what you're gonna do next is there anything that is going to be happening to Tatkin? Mm, I'm not sure. I guess that depends on whether you live or die. No, no. Whether you live or die might be how you answer, but no. Is there anything that is going to happen to Tatkin? I will live. I will go there. I will protect him and I will stop it. But... If there is nothing to stop, that would be in your best interest to tell me now. He sighs and he says, I I I'll tell you this. They they'll probably give it a couple of days, assuming that nobody got it. You know, assuming that nobody got away to talk, they'll give it a couple of days. Um, and, uh, and if none of us show up again, they might do something at that point. Oh, and then he starts looking around. Oh, wait. Somebody did get away. Well, um, you might want to look into that. Thank you for that warning. Uh, Pico, can you think of any other questions to ask this person aside from his exact organization? All I can think of is, well, I... Who ex I mean, I, maybe I missed something. Did we get the name of who ordered this hit? Um, actually, I believe I do. His name um, was Renfro, I believe. Okay. Um... And who is this Renfro? What does he be doing? I'm not sure exactly, but I do know. If you he... tell me he's the boss, I know that already. He's the boss of what? 
the boss of where? Joaquin Services. <sighs> yeah, I know his name isn't Joaquin, but I'm telling you as it is. Telling you as it is. No, I believe that. You have been the most compliant uh, interrogation -y. Thank you. Is there anybody else who would be yeah. liking to ask him a question? Yeah, actually, more on like a personal note. Uh, do you have some friends that work for um, like a drug dealer in the in the where were we? That street, Harpro. There's been people that look a lot like you that I was dealing with today. Are you guys like a like a a mercenary group or some type of like hired group? There are some. Um... So there are some mercenary groups uh, in the city. Um, if they, it, it, honestly, the the clothing, the, they're all pretty similar. So it's not not necessarily related to anybody in anybody I work with. But even if they were, we're not told about each other's jobs. So I, uh, I honestly don't know what you're talking about. No, that's this, fair. Was just this Joaquin place that you are working for, do they deal in drugs as well as loan sharking? Not that I know of. I haven't seen anything dealing with drugs. My okay. understanding is that I think they're trying to buy up shops or acquire shops in that area for some reason. That's all I know about them. Okay. Anybody else got any good questions for this guy? No, especially. Um, so I think we'll probably need to uh, have them locked up for the time being. Although you seem to be skeptical about getting anything out of uh, Mr. Boss Man here. Oh, no, I do not think. I, I think I can get some stuff out of him, yes. But uh, his interrogation tactic is going to be a bit different. That's the only reason. I figured this would be easier to get the information out of the underlink first. All right. Well, um, I propose we go ahead and um, have them locked up somewhere. Um, and then... Uh, Where somewhere? Uh, Back in the middle? Well, there's that for the moment, but... Uh, We'll talk about that later. So you're putting it back in the barrel right now? Is there a way to clunk him on the head without killing him that would knock him unconscious again? He's completely tied up, so yeah, you can do that easily. Okay, yeah. Not to kill him, just to night-night time. Okay. Oof. He is unconscious. Okay. And... Anyway, um, I think they should get a little bit of the uh, a live preview, emphasis on live, but a live preview of the uh, Lavinia treatment, and um, I think we can arrange some sort of underground storage for these guys. Okay. It's a getting close to the time to try and get the ring back from... Uh, it's probably from... like 5 o'clock. Uh, okay. I think we have more urgent things, because if Tapkin's in danger... Yes, uh, we need to go make sure he's okay. The guy said it was they would give it a few days, but... No, uh, no, he said that before there was... If they didn't hear anything, but you let somebody get away. Ah, that bastard, the one who ran, yes. Well, I could not catch them all being in three places at once. I try very hard. <sighs> yes, we must go tell Tapkin. Okay, all right. Uh, what's the closest place where I can do any activating without too much nosiness? Mm, closest place? There's probably some open, uh, the occasional open park, you know, maybe 10 minutes away. Um, there's... Uh, Is there like a, a side alley here next to the apartments or something that, you know, we can just dig a hole in? it over again real quick or i mean you could always go in the yard at the end uh, i suppose they would have dirt and uh the streets are paved though 
So yeah, you'd have to find like a uh, a yard or a park or something like that. Well, any ideas there, uh, Pico? Uh, if the yard's good enough, I just need to be able to go down and out a little bit. I'll just make a small, like, 15-foot space or something like that to stuff them in. Probably preferably with them kind of under the road area, so any direct excavations would be a little more noticeable if anybody else tried to find them. But uh, that's something I can do in about a minute. So put that in, seal up the entrance. There should be enough room and air that they'll last for a while. Let's find tap in, and then we can try and uh, talk to it or his girlfriend. Okay, then... so when you're trying to excavate in the yard, um, what are you doing to avoid people seeing you excavating in the yard, if anything? Well, that was why I specifically asked about the nearest place that was quiet for that. If, if that looks like it's going to be an issue, let's see, we're at... Uh, is that right here where we are? Where yeah, where that uh, wagon is. So I was saying yeah, there's, there's like kind of like a small park up here f near 14. Then there's the whole park district up here at 12. Um, you can also go to the outside near the walls are, and there's open spaces for things like small farm plots and whatnot. So you could go to the wall as well. I mean, how confident am I am that I'd have quietness at the park? I mean, for all I know, that nosy little kid's floating around somewhere. It's still daylight, so there's a good chance you'll have nosy kids floating around. Um, okay, how about we just go ahead and quickly head just right outside of town and, uh, and do this. Okay. So, okay, you go outside of town. You uh, They let you out of the gate. They don't even notice you carrying a barrel because you know it's fairly common um and then yeah you're able to find a quiet spot bury them and come back and that whole process takes about 20 minutes and you're back to where you started all right so it's so, 5 20. okay uh let's go find tapkin okay um so ragu are you gonna lead the way Uh, yes, yes, I'm going to lead the way. I'm going to go ahead and have Char, whilst Dave, or sorry, whilst Pico was doing that with the barrel, I'm just going to scrawl a quick note to uh, Gimbal saying, uh, if you could please meet me at your shop after hours very quickly, and then have Char fly off, and then we're going to head off to Atkins Clothing. Okay, you, um, you travel. It takes you about 35 minutes to get there, so it's about... Um, 6.05 when you get there. Okay, we're cutting it close, people. So we need to be somewhere else at 6.30. We need to be somewhere else at 7. Ah. Okay, so, well, let's find Tapkin. So you find a sh his clothing shop. Um, it's still open, actually. I think it closes at 7. So, yep, he, he's still there. So what do you do? Excellent. Going right on in. Okay, you yep. go in, and then... Uh, he looks around and he notices your clothing. And he's like, he's like, Raku, you were trying to get new clothing. Um, I didn't know you were going to destroy your current clothing. Uh, it was not intentional, but I must be telling you that your shop, it has spies. The wolves have eaters. Otherwise, I wouldn't have known how to conversation. Uh, he sighs, and Still um. I didn't. Well, I'm not surprised, um, but that that's fine. I'm not doing anything. Yes. Well, well, in order to make sure that nothing is happening to you, then uh, maybe you can uh, spend the night with your good friend Gimbal. I mean, no, I think you should about stay with us. us. Unless, unless, Gim unless you're sure that Gimbal can keep him safe. Um. Out of character, I'm pretty sure Gimbal can keep him safe, considering Gimbal runs the illegal um, magic item black market thing. So he's got all sorts of protections and and hidey holes and well, how to get away. Which is all true. Although the biggest thing that Gimbal has in his favor is he works in the fine shop district. And uh, there's just going to be lots of guards around because it's in their best interest to make sure that nothing happens in the fine shop district because that's where the nobles like to go and hang out. Okay. What do you think? Is that where Tatkin shop is or it's Tatkin shop in the lower? No, he's in the merchant district. Uh, or sorry, the market district, marketplaces district where you are now. Um, okay. 
So they, uh, that's definitely uh, that's a normal area. Okay. Well, uh, if if you are wanting him to come with us, Picos, that's fine. I just thought uh, it might be easier for Gimbal, but yes, we'll take him whichever way. I mean, if you think Gimbal can keep him safe, um, but yeah, I just want to make sure that this doesn't turn into more tragedy. And um, speaking of which, I think I have an idea on how to uh, solve your problem, sir. Um, but yeah, we'll need you to stay low for a while regardless. He, uh, he nods. I understand. You, you think there's... Something happened, didn't it, Ragu? Oh yes, I'm. I'm having proof that something happened on purpose. All right, um, I'll go to Gimbal's. Um, I can. I can take myself. Um, he. Uh, uh, it's uh, fine. I'll be fine. I'd rather now. have an ex escort for you, at least. Um, That's fine. Uh, I. I. Let's. Let's just go. Um, I yeah, unfortunately, I'm Ragu. I wasn't able to finish your clothing. Um, if I am staying at Gimbal's, that will require more time. Um, I've got two favors to ask here. One is, do you have a set of, like, the clothes that you're wearing right now, do you have a similar set that's likely to fit me? Uh, he looks at you. Uh, you're a normal height, right, Pico? Yeah, pretty much. Uh, sure. Uh, I have something that'll work, and he hands you a set of clothing. Okay, and can I borrow the keys for your shop? The idea here is, is that um, if you're a target, I'm going to make sure that there's a target to be had. All right. I guess I don't have much choice. He hands you a key. Thank you. All right, well, let's get him uh, we'll lock the shop up for the night, get him sequestered away. Um, and we'll have to be careful because, well, they were already watching this place. All right. So, okay, so um, you got your clothing, you got him. So what are you guys doing? Uh, once we're sure that he's safe at Gimbal's, we can go ahead and try and meet up at the Golden Dice. All right. So, yeah, you go to Gimbal's and Gimbal looks surprised. Like, did something I mean, happen? Oh. Yes. Uh, something could be happening. And uh, your mutual friend, Mr. Atkin here, is, uh, might need a place to lie a little bit. Yeah, so, of course, of course. He, he takes him in. Go do what you need to do. I'll take care of him. Do not worry. We will finish this. Okay. And then, oh, and uh, while we're at it, this might be a good time to uh, provide Gimbal with that keepsake. Oh, yeah. He, he, uh, you hand it to him, and he's like, you can see him kind of well up, and he, he puts it away, and he says, he bows, and he says, thank you so much. Um, you, uh, he looks over at Ragu, sees the torn clothing, and he just walks behind the counter, walks back, and hands Raku a healing potion. Thank you very much. Of course. Is this a normal healing potion? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'll go ahead and sip it now. Fair enough. We are going to solve this problem permanently, Gimbal. I see. Well, I wish you luck. All right, so yeah, you guys start making your way. So as you're going, one thing I want to ask is uh, Galen, Iyer, and um, uh, Galen, Iyer, and Devok. You had your 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 plans for tonight. Are you still going to do that? Are you still going to the full barrel, or are you going along yeah. with the rest of the group? I think we should still do our. Uh, what time yeah. is your uh, particular plan? Well, we just have to do it at nighttime, but Devok does have to do his uh, correct answer stuff. So, However, that is at okay. midnight. Mm -hmm. Okay. The thing we have to do here is at uh, 7 p.m. But yeah, it's going to be we'll dark. Take... Yeah. But hopefully like... it will not take any longer than that, and we can meet you if you do it a little bit later. If we... uh, I'm perfectly fine doing the 7 p.m. thing. Honestly, letting the heat die down on the dark ring for a little bit might not be a bad idea, too. Okay, so you guys are just going to go as a group then to the Golden Dice. 
Yeah. Sure. Okay, I'm down. down. Yeah. I... Fair enough. We can back each other up a bit. Alrighty, so here we go. Uh, you guys are actually uh, at a uh, location all together, which hasn't happened in a while. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so what do you do? You see the place is busy, uh, or starting to get busy. There's a couple of people online. Uh, more people are lining up. Uh, you see the bouncer at the door. So what do you do? Uh, Waiting people? for the door to meet us. Okay. Um, he, he was going to meet us inside, wasn't he? Or do we wait out here for them? Front, as I recall. Okay, we will wait out front for the door. Okay, so a moment, a couple of minutes passes, and then you see Delore pop out, uh, whisper something to the uh, bouncer, and then wave you in. Okay. All right. So let me go ahead and move you guys. So I'm going to stack you up, and then I'll move you inside. Cool. There you go. Everybody should be on the map now. And Delore goes and sits down. And you see Delore with this surprisingly attractive um, uh, five foot tall uh, human uh, who's sitting down uh, drinking some wine. There's gotta be something bad with this again, right? Uh, yeah. Hopefully it's not Janice. Uh, right. Do we remember what Janice looks like? I believe you do, and it does not look like Janice. Okay. Although it's it is similar, um, but you but it's far and it's still different enough that you think it's a type, if you know what I mean. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. All right. He says, uh, "Please, um, see, yeah, please yeah. sit down." Um. 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 Farrelly, uh, I have a friend here who wishes to speak to you. And she looks at him like, oh, of course. Um, what's your name? My name is Rassiri Blupa. And I am here to try to right a very grave injustice to a very, very loving old lady who met a very untimely end. Oh, no. Um, what happened? This very poor old lady. Um, her name was Lavinia. She ran the apothecary shop just down the street a little ways. Like an hour away, but go ahead. Yeah. She doesn't say that. <laughs> that's, that's what she's yeah. probably thinking, but go ahead. Yeah. Anyway, you know, being a little old lady, she gets into a little bit of debt. And uh, rather than letting her family help her out, she, uh, she gets a loan from a very bad person. And this very bad person uh, decides to collect on the loan that uh, he, he made to the old lady. And uh, in doing so, he has the old lady murdered. Uh, you can see very she looks shocked. She says... Very sad. Very painful. Very, very tragic. I am hunting down these men that have uh, committed this crime. And I'm going to, uh, I'm going to teach them right from wrong. But through no fault of your own, and through no major fault of uh, Mr. Delore here, whom we've uh, previously met. What do you mean major? I didn't do anything. <laughs> of course not. Um, it turns out that some of that blood-soaked money that the uh, bad guys kill the old lady for is in your possession. I need to collect it. You're talking about the ring, aren't you? Yes. Well, she looks at Delore. He's an idiot, so I knew this was coming. And uh, somebody was going to come and search for this ring because... What he doesn't know, uh, because he's an idiot, is this ring is, she whispers, is actually magical. And she pulls it out and she puts it on the table. And you yeah. see Voices of the Wild, which I'm going to share with you now. 
This woman, I turned to Dolor. This woman is very intelligent. You listen to everything she has to say from now on, and maybe you'll keep your butt out of trouble. Yes? He, uh, he, he looks uh, chagrined. It's like, well, I didn't know. And she looks at him. Really? Really? Look at the gems. You know, look. And, and here's this. She turns it over. You see what that says right there? She points at the underside. It says Lavinia. It obviously belongs to somebody. And she puts it back on the table. I, I, I pick up the ring and uh, I reach into my pocket and I take out six gold pieces and I place them in front of her and say, uh, this is for your kindness and syllables. And thank you for your honesty. And I turned to the Lord and was like, well, why have you not gotten her a different gift yet? You knew this was going to be happening. Um, well, I... Um, thank you. <laughs> she looks at him. Don't worry about it. And then she, uh, she takes one of the gold pieces and then takes the stack, the rest of it, and puts it back in front of you. I'm going to walk over to Delora a bit and, uh, you know, and looking towards the woman, I'll put my arm around uh, uh, Delora's shoulder and it's like, no, no, you know, I know this isn't the most flattering uh, situation here, but, you know, he actually helped us solve the major investigation. She looks, she actually looks surprised. Um, really? Yes. Um, I don't know if you had uh, heard about um, some of the uh, uh, monster incursions in the uh, city recently, but uh, he was actually able to uh, help us track down uh, uh, some of these creatures so we could defeat them and get rid of the source of them. Oh, wow. Well, she looks at Delora. Well, you know, I know he's not always an idiot. He just has his blind spots. Uh, they involve alcohol, and <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, Delore takes as as she says that he takes a swig. <laughs> <laughs> well then, well, I you got your ring back, um, or Lavinia's ring back. I uh, yeah. I hope that you can uh, bring her justice, and. Um, and I'm sorry that uh, you had to go out of your way to get it back because of uh, Knucklehead over here. Oh no, this oh, was in was... fact the easiest part. Tracking it this far was the difficult part. We're just appreciative that you are not more uh, upset or angry about uh, removing the ring from your possession. Well, like I said, I knew this was coming. It, there's just no way he, he could get that for 30 silver and not have the real owner come for it eventually. Very, well, very smart one, this. Dolor, you pay more attention to her. He hangs his head. <laughs> and then takes another swig. <laughs> well, I suppose we could take you with us to go try and uh, solve this crime, but uh, we'll let you enjoy your day off. Or night off. All right. Dolor waves and says, well... Um, that went better than I was expecting, so, um, thank you, and, well, um, good luck. Likewise, patting him on the back. Okay. That was so much easier than the rest of this day has been so far. <laughs> well, that wasn't terrible. Good work, no, everyone. No. Good job. Yes. Pat's on the back all around. That was nice and quick, and now we can uh, go... You know, stand across the street or something and give you back up on uh, perhaps whatever project you are doing so none of so, us are jumped alone in an alley again. <laughs> so, Ragu, what does this ring do? Um, one second. I just had it copied. You sh it should be a. Um... Oh, there you go. And out.
so you must be having an intelligence of 10 or higher. Or what, the wearer explodes? No, or I have to expend charges to talk to you. Alrighty, so are you putting it on? Uh... You'll notice that not, it is, not, is actually not attuned, or doesn't require being attuned. It's just whoever wears it gets this effect. Yeah. Um, I will go ahead and put it on, but not until after we get out of the golden dice. And then I'll slip We're it already on after the golden dice. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I will go ahead and slip it on my finger. All right. All right. Well, let's test it. Uh, let's see if you can understand this. Ragu, you're a reckless fool. Oh, hardy, har, har. It worked. It worked. <laughs> okay. So, so we've solved that immediate issue. Um, uh, tapped in this should be safe for the moment. So we've got um, your, what is it you're planning on doing? The drug dealer to think. And then uh, back to Tatkins to see if we can catch him trying to hurt him. Okay, so where are you going? Um, the drug dealer thing. Vok, Galen, Iyer, would you like our yes. help? Uh, sure. Yeah, we'd love some help. All right, well, in that case, lead the way. Okay, and actually, Aurea, we want to come help, too. We might need a sneaky person. Yeah, that's probably the most important thing. Sure. All right, awesome, thank you. All right, so, so it takes you about to, 45 minutes to get there. Yeah, let's go to ba Barrel, 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 Fall, Barrel. The full, the full <laughs> Barrel. barrel. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not really, really I'm not good with the names. Um, Here, I'll, I'm going to go ahead and put it in the chat again. So you put it in the chat <laughs> too, enough times. It's not going to help. I'm sorry. I'll try my best. All right, so let me go ahead and add everybody else. Go, Oreo, um, Ragu, Char. All right, so everybody should see the map. Am I, did I miss anybody? No. Yeah, I think we're good. Okay. All right, so what do you do? So I'll let them know on the walk over here. Uh, this is kind of a front for the ring in some way. Uh, we've seen the dealers going in and out of here and also we were told that on the second story there's a, a room of an important person that would have more information about their other kind of main base thing in regards to like the code that they use i'll show them the notes we found as well um you also remember you were told there's a back office in the first yes. floor that might also have information yeah, there's a back office. It's around the back over here. And then there's a second story window over here that we were going to use for our break and attempt, but it was too bright outside. Hmm. So, yeah, I don't know. Oreo, you're the stealth queen. I'm not really sure which entrance would be better to take on first, but that's all you. Um, how dark is it out right now? It's nighttime. It's uh, the sunset. And where's the second floor window? Um, if you're looking around, you'd see it over here, like on this on the side here above, uh, near the door, but above. And is it? Does it sound like it's pretty quiet all around? Um, you can hear somebody on the other side of this wall on the first floor, looking at the second floor. You know, you're down below looking, but it, you don't see anybody through the second second floor window. Uh, we can try and do something that we did with uh, Regu and Pico um, earlier today, but I don't know if what kind of tactic you guys want to use this time. The idea would be somebody distract in the first floor while somebody tries to investigate the second floor. In this case, I'd go up. Hmm. Okay. What type of distraction are we talking about here? Good question. Well, Ragu earlier did something where he pretended to be someone he wasn't and made quite a distinct amount of noise, which kind of helped mask the 
break of the window. Otherwise, there's no way of getting around a big breaking window. Are you okay. looking to be cool. distracting again? I didn't say that they say that. I'm just saying like that's the plan that we went with, so we can try something like that. What if I like went in and told him that we were from the insurance company and we were trying to reach out to him about his chariot's extended warranty? <laughs> yeah, that sounds good, yeah. I like that. For the distraction? That that could definitely work. I mean if you yeah. guys are able to hear any kind of breaking, maybe you guys can try and cough up an issue. Noise. Yeah, yeah exactly. or something like, you know, somebody start coughing really loudly or something. I don't know. Yeah, I can I can do that. I can make a realistic sounding cough. <laughs> it's just a robot coughing. <laughs> <laughs> He's got no lungs. <laughs> well, at least this one's got arms. Uh, very nice. <laughs> Oh, wait a minute. This yeah, first he, he, level has he, glass, doesn't he, it? That was a reference. That was a yeah, that was an ancient reference. How yeah, he, was. He, he thinks he's making a perfect bird call, but what the rest of us hear is that 1980s fax dial-up sound. <laughs> anyway, the first floor does have windows. You're looking at them right now. All right. Um, um, is there anybody that's particularly clumsy? Uh, uh, I'm not particularly clumsy, but I'm not exactly nimble. Same. Well, what if is there? What if somebody accidentally? Oh, broke, broke the, into window the window at the same with something. Time. Hey, who has mending? I have mending. Ooh, perfect. So, um, okay. Are there any big objects around here? Big objects? Yeah. Um, Me. There's, there's stuff yeah. in the alleyway, like broken boxes and stuff. Remember, we don't want to full-on assault the first story, necessarily. No, no I, well, I had an idea, because... Uh, oh, there's some boxes over here as well. When the window tragically breaks, well, you know, go ahead and use mending to go ahead and fix it, which will, of course, take some time. It'll be noisy as we're messing with all these pieces of broken glass. Mm-hmm. Sounds good to me. Got to make things right. Oh, yeah. in fact, Ayer, you look like the kind of person who doesn't know how heavy you are. Um, maybe when you're leaning against the wall, you should be careful to not accidentally put all your weight on the window and kind of sort of fall into it. I have a really good plan. All right. So you know how this is like a general store? Let's pretend to be shoppers. Ayer, try out these rocking chairs and just rock <laughs> through the window. <laughs> Hey, that's a uh -huh. good one. All right. Yeah, I can do that. Yeah, well, let's just let's just go, Oreo. Whenever you're ready, I guess we can head in and try to cover for you. And maybe, and maybe uh, when you hear the crash, that's when you break the second floor. Yeah. So first off, how tall is the building, um, Jeremy? I want to get to the corner at the very least. Um, it's probably about twenty feet tall. My climbing is twenty feet, so I like to climb up. Okay, well, like before, um, the biggest issue you have is the overhang, so uh, I'll just make you, have you make a DC-10 climb check for that. I don't have a climb check, so what is it? Is it, um, uh, can I use acrobatics? Um, acrobatics will be fine. Okay, yep, no problem, you get on the roof. I'm um, assuming you're trying to do that without anybody hearing or spotting you though, right? Correct. So go ahead and make a stealth check. Now, for what it's worth, since we're trying to be a distraction, we'll go ahead and talk loudly elsewhere. Um, if we're trying to be normal people, so that okay. uh, then that gives her advantage. And uh, yep, you get on the roof, and yeah. nobody seems to have noticed you. And um, how far is the second floor window from the roof? So it's like right over here. So it's just like uh, you kind of if you went over and you kind of hang over, it's maybe a, a foot or two. Okay, um, I I can still kind of see Ragu from where I'm at, so I give him a sign of like a countdown of three, so that way that should hopefully give him a sign to tell the others that in three, I'm breaking. Okay. I'm gonna essentially try and like use both of my feet to kick in. Okay, as she's so, counting down to three, what's everybody else doing? Oh wait, we have three signs um, to break this window. 
Yeah, well, I thought I'm I was doing signaling. a rocking chair. I I, I'm kind of signaling you guys. Fire, you know, throw like... me. Throw you. Okay. Three. <laughs> I pick go, up Galen <laughs> and I launch him into the window. One. Okay. Iyer and Oreo, both of you make strength checks. Okay. We're in a fight, okay, Iyer? We're going to pretend to uh. be fighting. <laughs> okay, Iyer, you throw um, Galen through the window. Galen, in the process, you take one point of damage as you no. uh, smash <laughs> into the furniture, knocking everything over. <laughs> you see someone kind of running around. What's happening? Um, this crazy robot and Oreo, attacking me. She <laughs> swings around to kick in the window and bounces off. Oh lord! <laughs> and before okay. before anyone has time to like, you know, figure out what's going on, I'm charging through the window and I'm gonna I'm gonna charge. Hold on, Galen though. Though. Hold, hold on. If I was able to break the other window earlier without even having to make a strength check, what's the difference now? Um, that's a good question. Uh, yeah, if I didn't ask for a strength check before, that's reasonable. Okay, fair enough. You right. uh, bust through. I pro I probably meant to do it last time, but I didn't, so that is. Fine. I was gonna have Iyer do a WWE chair break on my brain. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. so Oreo, you managed to break uh, to get in. Uh, the window is now broken. You can see that the path. I goes... can see. Oh, there it goes. Now yeah. I can see. Okay, you see uh, a path goes around the corner, and you see a door that is closed. Do I hear anything first off? Um, you hear a uh, shouting from downstairs as someone's saying, What are you doing? Um, anything immediate, though, around the corner or in, by the door here? Um, you, hear, um, you hear loud, uh, foot, you hear a door slam, and you, you hear someone moving your direction. And I have um, Go ahead. Go ahead. Or you? Um, moving in what direction? This direction or no, this towards direction? You. So I want to run around. Oh, shoot. Uh, how big is the bench or the thing it's here? It's a, a bench that you sit in, like, um, you know, like you'd expect to see at a park. Then how does the door swing open? Is it to my left or to the right? Or how does it look like? It looks like it swings... Um, actually, it should swing out toward the hallway, so it's going to swing away from you. Uh, can I, I see the hinges and go into the side that the door is going to swing open to and just stay there stealthily? Go ahead and make a high check. Meant meanwhile, uh, Pico, what were you saying? Uh, so I go ahead and uh, bust in, and I'm like, no, no, you said it wrong. That's a classic automata insult when you say it that way. <laughs> just be like chanting fight <laughs> and the guys uh you see the guy running up what is going on here you've broken the glass you've knocked over the furniture what's happening uh, I'm, I'm sorry there's all a misunderstanding one of them accidentally insulted the other we'll we'll, we'll fix your window we, we can actually do this right now i, I see fire <laughs> and uh and Gale, and it's like no look look it, it's, it's okay you know, no he did he said mm -hmm. it wrong no. he wasn't meaning to insult you Let's i shove I shove him out of the way and I, I grab a chair. <laughs> oh no, he's going for it. <laughs> Alright, so what I'm going to have you guys do is um, uh, make a performance or a deception check with advantage because you're all working together at this. Sweet. Uh, what's better for you, Iyer? They're the same for me. Any okay. of you can make the roll. Let's do performance because um, it's like kind of WWE. Yeah, like yeah. Performance -y. Well, Gail, I think you need to be the one making the roll because you're the one. I mean, oh, okay. I, th I thought we all got to make it. Uh, you have advantage because you're working together. So I, yeah, okay. So oh, 17, yeah, the guy walks up and he's like, okay, stop fighting and fix the window then. Can you do that? Yeah, yeah, I just got, got, just got to calm them down here, but uh, yeah, I, I know that uh, one of them's got mending, and we'll actually be able to put the window back together, good as new, it'll be fixed within minutes. Is there a problem okay. over here, and you see this, I'm just gonna, uh, this, I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, gonna be like, uh, not, ch like, repeating over and over, rage mode activated, rage mode <laughs> activated, <laughs> and I'm prepared to just slam this chair on the game. And then you see the, um, the guy came running out first, looked back, said, I'm not sure, they say they can fix it. Fix what? Oh. What the? 
<laughs> I'm sorry. I didn't mean it. I didn't mean it. Don't hurt me. Mr. Rage Robot. mode activated. Rage mode. Fight, 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 fight. <laughs> Meanwhile, um, uh, Oreo, you see a uh, you see the door open and close uh, quick quickly. You see a, uh, a hallway outside while it's open, and a uh, a person uh, walks through, uh, heading for the stairs. With your camouflage of 22, he heads right past you and down the stairs. As soon as he's around the corner, I go into the room. Okay, let me go ahead and uh, delete the uh, door. Okay, and Jeez. you see a hallway, and you see uh, one, two, three, yeah, multiple uh, doors. Did uh, memory again in terms of Galen saying in the second floor that there was a room at what corner, what direction? He didn't give you a direction. He just says there's an important room on the second floor. Yeah, God I don't. I don't know. I'm sorry. No, you're good. You're good. Um, uh, first thing is I want to just pass by the rooms just to see if I hear anybody else. You do not hear anything. Okay, so first door is it locked? It does not appear to be locked. No. I open it, I go in, What is it? and I close okay, it behind you me. You go in, you and you find a lavatory. Meanwhile, Never mind. <laughs> meanwhile, uh, what are you guys doing at this point? The, the, you can see the, um, the thug approaching. Um, you can see more people coming out. Um, and it says, uh, so are you fixing the window? I will. Yeah, I just will. gotta calm down the automaton. I'll fix here. the window. Just make the robot hurt me. I'm gonna hide behind the shop. <laughs> <laughs> I, I gotta try and uh, pull um, iron towards the door. Okay, iron. Are you cooperating or are you not? No, I'm. I'm stepping okay. towards. Rage the, okay. Well, rage both of you, uh, rage go ahead and make an opposed strength mode. chest. Strength check. Uh, he's going to automatically succeed. I'm going to deliberately fail because I figure that uh, if he wants to cooperate, he'll recognize what pulling on him means. Okay. So if he's pulling aggressively, it's like, okay, I'll let him have at it. Fair enough. Ayer, you step toward the shopkeeper. What do you do? Walk around him, rage mode, walking towards Galen with the chair over my head. All right, let's do the sick move, bro. <laughs> hey, break, um, the, break, the, break the bed with the chair and me. I <laughs> told you... Uh, okay, it looks like they're not fixing the window. We're gonna have to just just get them out of here. Use force if you I, need to. I go to slam the chair down on Galen, <laughs> and I uh, I hesitate for a second, kind of like nodding at him to to let him know I'm about to slam the yeah, chair. Yeah, I'm ready to roll with it. Yeah. Let's go. And then I I just bring it down as hard as I can. Well, okay. that's not very performant. <laughs> uh, okay, well, make, okay, it, make okay. I make, it, I make a, I make a, uh, an attempt to make it, you know, to break the chair without hurting Galen. If, if okay, possible. in that case, give me a performance. Yes. <laughs> All right, you Super smash stars. the chair right next to Galen uh, as Galen definitely dodges out of the way. And at this point in time, the uh, thugs start pulling out their weapons. Please leave now. Okay, I'm sorry. I'll, I'll oh. fix it. <laughs> Just leave me alone. I'm sorry, robot. <laughs> All right, Rage. please go to, to the door and leave. Uh, Back to uh, Rage Oreo. mode. Rage mode. Yep, next door. Oh. Opening up. Saying, oh, just running. making a quick check. <laughs> All right, fair enough. I'm running away. You open it up, and you see a small cupboard. Doesn't look important, so I'm going to go straight to the next. All right. You go to the next door, and you open it up, and you see a, a large bedroom with a desk. Perfect. Go in and start investigating the hell out of this. Well, I mean, okay. oh, yeah, investigate, I guess. All right. Yeah, you walk over, and you see some papers on the desk. Uh, hold on. Uh... And uh, most of the papers don't look very interesting. They look like basic ledgers and uh, whatnot for the store. Mm -hmm. Although you do see a small note, uh, and it, and I um, I typed in what it says in the chat. Meanwhile, all right, the uh, guards are sorry. The uh, thugs are approaching. What's everybody else doing? Well, I think right, we uh... left. Yeah. Is Iyer calming down now? Well, Iyer, are you calming down now? Uh, yeah. Let's let's okay. let's pretend to be a little bit mad until the thugs aren't looking, so they know it was. Uh, uh, Iyer, I'm gonna like, over here just calm down. Uh, well, and then um, 
Let's, 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 let's go ahead and just try and get this window fixed. Um, I'll start finding the pieces, and then um, you, you can start mending them, because you're the one with mending, right? Okay, I'll start casting mending on the window. All right, there we go. Yeah, see, we're doing it all. I'll hold up a chunk, you know, as we're figuring this out so that we can fix it one break in time. Uh, the uh, shopkeeper uh, comes over, kind of holds up his hand. Just let him fix the window. As long as they don't come in and start destroying stuff again, you guys just stand over there in case they come back in. And then the thugs kind of back up and kind of just stand there with their arms crossed looking as you guys repair the window. Perfect. That'll hopefully buy Oreo as much time as she needs. Meanwhile, Oreo, you uh, found that uh, that note. Um, so... Now, just uh, uh, again, memories, just, just out of what I recall Galen telling me, is, did he say what was that he was specifically, what kind of information he was looking for up here? He said something about a code, but you're clearly not seeing a code up here. Okay, but I'm still going to take the note and... Okay. Uh, go to the other room here. Okay. You open it up, and you looks looks like some sort of kitchen slash dining area. Anything uh, catch my eye? Say it again. Anything catch my eye? Um, not really. Um, other than I left the stove on without anybody here watching it. Uh, this room. Okay. And it looks like a storage closet. Quick check in. Nothing catch my eye either? Nope. Shit. Okay. Um, no code, though. All right. And that's and that's even with any potential roll checking to see, like, to be super sure that there's no hidden spots or anything? You can make a roll if, if you want. Yeah. I want to use Dungeon Dover to see if I can find any hidden... Well, I mean, it's not... I know Dungeon Dover is supposed to be to find any like openings, but m my interpretation of it is a hidden spot is a hidden opening, and that's yeah, like why. A, I... Like a like a like um, a secret door or something. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. So. All right, you're nice. looking around, and um, you see a uh, a bulge in the uh, carpet that um, looks like a like a square. I go. I left the carpet and. You see, see what, what looks like a safe embedded in uh, in the floor. Uh, meanwhile, uh, um, you guys are um, currently repairing the uh, window at the moment, correct? Yes. Yes. And then the other Taking thing I'm going to do is while. just to keep the tension level up so they're likely to stay. I'm going to come over here and it's like, and I, and I promise we're going to fix the chair too. So I'm just going to start grabbing the pieces so that I can, uh, you know, get that all together and just kind of be running back and forth. So door constantly opening and closing, you know, trying to make more noise and activity as we're working to put together these puzzle pieces. You can tell as you're doing this that the um, both the, th th the thugs and the uh, shopkeeper Every time you open and close the door, they, you can tell their their patience is wearing uh, a bit more thin. Uh, meanwhile, all right, uh, Oreo, you've uh, uncovered the um, safe. What do you do? Is it locked? Yep. I would like to open it. Yeah, you can try using your lock picks. Okay, please, 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 please. please. Uh... You uh, you go working on it, and it looks like the uh, the lock is just um, it's very well made, and you're not how, having any luck. How? You know what? How, okay, first off, how big is the box? It's probably about um, half a foot by half a foot by a quarter of a foot. It looks like there's like late? a spot in the floor where it's just put, uh, placed. Is it too late for it? Well, I don't know if it's worth it or not, but... Does it look like it was an... I mean, you said it was a bulge. Does it look like if I take it off that it's obvious that it's gone? Yeah, that looks like the carpet will sag uh, where that where that gap is. Can I find something that looks similar to it? Like books. Stack of books or... There are definitely like... books. Uh, so yeah, you can stack in the books. And uh, you're you're sitting there trying to get the uh, height just right. So you're just trying different books. And while you're doing that, what is the rest of the group doing? Uh, uh, you're currently repairing the windows and the chairs. Are you doing anything else? 
Uh, no, that's pretty much it. Just profuse, profusely apologizing as we make sure to show that, you know, we are making haphazard progress. All right. Yeah, you continue. Um, you notice that the um, thugs seem to get closer and uh, the, the, um, the shopkeeper is just like right there by the door. And back to Oreo, you've managed to make your stack of books and it looks pretty close to what it was before. Um, you can go ahead and make a, um, I don't know, probably a uh, perception check to see uh, how close it actually matches, or a history check for memory. Okay. Yeah, it looks like it's pretty close. You're, they probably won't be able to tell the difference. Okay, so I have the box with me, and then last piece of memory recall. They said that there was something potentially also in the first floor. Did he say a direction on in, in the first floor? I on did. the first it's floor the is in the back back office. Yeah, back office is the area. Uh, okay, so all right, My, so I'm gonna go out, go all the way out here first. If there's anybody coming, do I hear anything? No, you hear some noise from downstairs, but you don't hear anything up here. I will start doing the stealth check to go down the stairs, but I do not want to make presence. I just want to first peek to see where everybody stands. Okay, fair enough. You do so. Um, go ahead and make your stealth check. Uh, is it camouflage or tailing? Camouflage because I'm trying to blend in? Um, or I don't know which one. I mean, they're both the same bonus, but... Yeah, I guess it's camouflage if you're just kind of hiding there and listening uh, and watching. Okay, I'm doing the advantage because I'm using the boots. Okay, okay. Uh, yeah, you're looking around uh, down the stairs and you see what looks like another desk and uh, multiple pieces of furniture. It's obviously some sort of office, uh, but you don't see anybody in there. And you said it was uh, back right is what you said, Galen? Um, I don't know if it's a back direction, it's just the back office. If I had to guess by the shape of the building, there's like a doorway off to the left. So it okay. might towards the right. Yep, so I'm going to start investigating this desk. Okay, you do so, and you see various pieces of paper, and um, uh, as you start looking through, you see, you first you find a document with the name Kensing Carpentry, indicating receipt of several pieces of furniture wood items and other goods and you find another note and here it is i posted it or posted it in the chat sweet uh would she take it or yeah i mean if given had the note with him right it's not like it was he was memorized he memorized the note and told it to us he has the note yeah he has a note so then I'll take this note. Okay. And then, um, does it sound like everybody's still kind of in their spots and whatnot from there? Like there, I think there's just... noise from uh, from this direction. Oh, sorry, I'm in the wrong layer again. From this direction. Okay, I'm just gonna start busting all the way back to the same to the window up upstairs, and as soon as I peek out the window, um, I want to see if I can see. Ragu, if or anybody that uh, happens yeah, to Ragu's be yeah, Ragu's walking around, so you'd see Ragu uh, near the corner over here. I would give him a nod and uh, it's a twenty foot I mean, jump. I mean, yeah, oh, I uh, yeah. If Ragu's right there to help me out, then I'll jump down. <laughs> okay, and Ragu, you're gonna try to catch her. Yep. All right, go ahead and give me a dex check, um, whether that be, um, ac you can use acrobatics if you want. If uh, Ragu's there to help me, is that advantage or is that still a normal check? Um, you're also trying to make it easier on him so he can have advantage. Okay. Um, is it dex dex or strength because I'm trying to physically catch her? Um, this isn't a can you handle catching her. This is can you get under her and actually catch her and not have her to fall on her face. Which she does. So Ario, you uh, he uh, Ragu runs to catch you, and then as he tries to grab you, he he doesn't he doesn't get his arms all the way around you, and you just keep going and slam into the ground. Cool. Oh. Cool, cool, cool. How much do I take? Three points of damage. Cool. And then at this point in time, you hear, you hear um, one of the thugs say, "Wait, did you hear that?" 
It's like, what? These, these people are making so much noise. Um, I'm not sure. And then he makes a perception check. Yeah, oh. I definitely heard something. It's uh, it was back this way. I'm gonna go check it out, and he starts uh, heading toward the back. Could could Miragu start moving some other direction out of the alley, yep. knowing that we we made loud noise? Yeah, you can certainly start moving. Um, go ahead and make a uh, a stealth check as a group to see if you can get away without him knowing which, which direction you went. So it'd be you and Ragu making this check. Okay. Okay, so where do you go? Away from the building, so I guess to the left, Ragu? Yeah, we can go this way. Left, yeah. not that, right, because oh, no, right... That would, that would be right into their site. You might want to hang back. Or go, yeah, so maybe up, up... Wait, which way, though? It's the... Oh, you guys already moved that way. That That's that's fine. Yeah, so just, he walks just, out, okay, and okay, you okay, see gotcha. him looking okay. around, and um, it's like, I could swear I heard something. You hear, you hear the noise from the alley. And then the uh, and then uh, the other two thugs are like, uh, they, you see him shrug. It's like, oh, and yeah. one of his mouths. What do you expect? There's all this noise. You're you're imagining things. All right. So what is the main group doing now? Uh, I'll now that I've seen that they're kind of out. I'll finish the mending on all the stuff we have really quickly, and we can just head out of here. Yep. Uh, yeah. Once the chair's ready, I'll bring that back through the door. It's like, okay, here's the chair, and I'll carefully set it where it originally was. All right, they take it, and then uh, eventually the uh, thugs kind of go away, and then the shopkeeper looks at the group and is like, um, you, um, what's your name? He's he's uh, talking to you, Pico. Oh, my name is Boom of the uh, Thunderstorm. Okay, that actually explains a lot. Um Anyway, uh, boom. Um, is there any you really need to keep that shadow kind and that automata under control? I, I'd heard stories that you know of their wild nature, and I, you know I, I've been hearing all this talk about the dangers of, of Lumev and the portals, but now that I've seen it firsthand. Uh, uh -oh. Anyway, you need to keep that under control. Thank We're you for fixing things. We're getting racially profiled, Iron. And then he walks away. <laughs> yes, but we kind of brought it on ourselves. I mean, okay, but he just classified an entire race based off of one interaction. That's very true. So, well, I'd be fine if he was like, those two blokes are insane. Which yeah. is fair. We are insane. Yeah, but we like, are. Hmm. I don't feel bad for this guy. We're going to bring him in. All right, Oreo, what did you find? You're right. I give you guys the notes, and then I say, um, Pico, maybe I can help you this time around because for some reason I could not crack this thing. We probably want to not be in front of this place, though, while yeah, we're doing this. Uh, let's head out. All right. Anyway, I am going to uh, I put the, the notes in there again. So it seems like Kensing Carpentry is where they're making all this blue sand. They might be storing it and distributing it out of that, the full barrow. I still don't know how this passcode system works, but. All right. So what do you guys um, do next? Um, how far away are we? I mean, are, do we want to uh, open this up out um, at the apartments or do we want to just try and see what the hell it is? Because if it's something important, I don't know if it'll help, be helpful right now too. What um, was the uh, first note that said that the code is uh, starts with nine something? What was those first no, it numbers? Ends in, it ends in uh, three nine one. one. Yeah, three nine one. I think it was something like that. Let me pull up the the first note. Um, one second. Oh, where did I put it? Yeah, so remember the new passcode starts with 391. Oh, perfect. So it'll just combine with that other code. So it starts with 391. So it's 39142. That's the code. code yeah, is the... Not, yeah, not that other one. It's like... Not 339191. <laughs> Sorry, I double typed the numbers. Sorry, I was yeah, trying fine. to type fast and I'm not a good typist. <laughs> That's an eight. What the hell is wrong with my finger? Yeah. All right, we got it. We got it. We're smart. There it is. 
<laughs> I, I rolled the guidance on that one. Okay, yeah. perfect. Well, yeah, I, you... I, I, I just tried to type the numbers too quickly. I didn't mean to double up the two. Yeah, that's fine. All right. I think then um, we will go ahead and end the session there. It's almost. Uh, wait a minute. What about this uh, lock? Yeah, that was, that was the one thing I wanted to do. Oh, okay. Sure, in. go ahead. I right, wanna, so I'm going to help. I'm going to, I mean, as long as we're somewhere out of sight, uh, I don't know. Slums. We could just find some random alleyway for you to crack it. Yeah. Okay. So then from there, I'll give it to Pico because I already made my roll and I don't want to make it harder. So I'll give the helping to Pico. Okay. All right. Now, I know you're better at this now, but if I were me, what I would try giving myself you know what time. you don't need a brag just open the goddamn thing <laughs> hey i can still totally flub my role it's probably what's about to happen how about you give yourself some expert guidance then buddy yeah that's what i was setting up for uh thieves tools what's your bonus on thieves tools nine okay here we go fingers crossed oh god okay, okay. I'm probably not going to make it. Um, 17. All right. Um, no. Uh, you find that this lock is quite high quality, and the DC is probably 20. All righty. Well, we can at least keep it for now. But, I mean, if the information you guys got is what you need to at least move on to the next piece of them, at least they, for the time being, don't aren't aware that this is missing. And I kind of smiled to myself because I just I thought I made a proud judgment of putting bugs under a fucking carpet. Um, just out of curiosity, have you two checked to see if this uh, lock has traps? No. No. Um, in that case, may I try very quickly? Sure. With with my tinkering tools, I would like to uh, remove the hinges off the back of the box and open the oh, lock. Wait, wait, wait. Um... You said traps, yeah, not the log. For traps, I don't yeah. think we, there's a difference between not checking for traps and there not being traps. Yes, that's what I asked. Um, Oreo, would you be able to thing to make sure there's no trap? Sure. Um, I don't think I've got an advantage on that one, so it's just a regular perception. But allow me to offer my expert guidance. No, no, right there. All right, so yeah, it uh, you're pretty sure it's not trapped. Okay, can I use my tinker tools to take the hinges off the back of the box so that it can be opened in the reverse direction? Maybe you can roll. Okay. Um, can I get some helpers? We're all okay. Uh, what kind oh, of help do you yeah. need? Oh, I think I'm you want some expert guidance because you know it's really complicated to move a pin in a straight line. <laughs> yeah. Apparently it is. My turn. <laughs> <laughs> to remove the hinges off the back of the box. All right. So you uh, work at it, and uh, given how fine the lock is, um, that is not good enough. It, uh, feel... it the hinges are definitely uh, much higher. Much... Or, you they, feel... they apparently thought of this ahead of time. That's All not right. how you do it. Ayer, join me. We shall pray for the gods. To oh, open God. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay, you're going to pray for the gods? Yeah, yeah open this box. Okay, Please. you pray and you pray and you pray and you pray. <laughs> you're still praying, but nothing's happened so far. Well, it's working. You just got to give it time. So, curiosity. Okay, five Jeremy, minutes passes um... while you're praying. Everything happens for a reason. Exactly. Jeremy, can we say, since we're, this is going to be the end of the session anyway, that it, since we're going to be keeping the box for a fair bit, I would spend however many nights it'd be to lockpick this thing? Sure. You can, uh, you, can, uh, you can be working on it every night, and once enough time has passed, we'll uh, see what's inside. And yeah. I can help him provide guidance with that. Well, the idea of doing that is that I don't have to end up rolling it, because I believe we did something like that before where I could spend as many nights as I needed to to unlock something, and I didn't have to roll for it. Yeah, that, that, that's oh, okay. basically taking taking their time. If it's possible yeah. at all, eventually they'll get through it. Yeah. All right, so Oreo, one... you definitely failed a couple of times, so we're going to go ahead and give you full. Uh, Pico, I think you failed once, right? Um, I failed my Thieves Tools roll. Okay. 
I think that might be the only roll I've done. Raku definitely failed twice. Devok, I'm pretty sure you failed twice. I believe so. Uh, Galen, you definitely failed twice. Ire, you definitely failed twice. Okay. So, um, you uh, get um, 2,001, uh, two, uh, 2,720 experience points. Um, 1,120 from four encounters, 1,220 from uh, exploration, which also includes finding clues, and 280 for treasure. And then you can see who gains um, learning by failure. <laughs> 